Am I... Are we live again? <laughs> are we live again? He is back. Internet went way down. Hold on. We can hit it with a ping really quick. That doesn't seem right. What? One millisecond response time? There's no way. I mean, I do live in like a Google server host location. Look at that. My internet went like completely down. And now it's back up like nothing ever happened. Let me let me check on a another thing. Speedtest.net. I think I also need to refresh this thing because I don't think that this works anymore. Yeah, OBS is a little broken, but then the connection here kind of broke. <laughs> Hold on, close this. Uh, what is it called? Friendly Potato Stream. So that should be okay. When we're looking at speed tests, that help. Drop back in. See, change the server to change to Georgia Institute of Technology. There we go. Don't want to just give away my IP for free, even though. No. I think it's fine. Oh my God! Look at that. <laughs> I do get um nearly a gig download, even though it's coming from a a public university server. That's not too bad. What's my upload? Ooh, 250. Not, not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, hopefully I didn't send it like another notification. It's all right. Anyways, <laughs> back to this stuff. Oh. Hit push. There we go. Send it. And now what we're going to do is we can now clean up this thing. Because I was, I was holding off on deleting a bunch of this stuff. I was holding off on deleting a bunch of this stuff until it was like explicitly necessary or expressly necessary, I should say. So let's see. Um... So there's a few things that we need to do. So mesh dot surface, set surface material. So it needs to be surface. I think it's just one. Okay, I've, there's only one surface on the mesh, so I think that's okay. Uh, and then yeah, there's the material, right? So we don't need to do a material override. I don't think this actually does anything at this point in time, unless the opacity is actually doing a thing with hiding the hands. Oh my god, the, o the opacity is doing a thing with hiding the hands. All right, so that's one thing that we need to do. Another thing that we need to do is, uh, I think there's like some sort of, there's something I need, there's like some reading I need to do into how the actual API spec works. Because to be honest, I have no idea. Like the vignette application, it's very complicated. It's it's um it does follow. Well, it roughly follows what I would consider enterprise coding standards, which is to say it's very hard to understand. It's very verbose for no reason. Um Especially since they, I guess they only have one renderer, so there's no reason to have this level of ab abstraction, in my opinion. When is apply state called? Yeah, I have no idea. What the heck is apply state? It's just a definition. There's a base apply state. And then there's draw node. You can look at this. When is, when is this called? I don't even know. This is called 
two places, sure. Definition, references, cubism renderer, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So apply state, so you have shaders, masking context, and your drawables, which are ordered by the render order. Yeah, because you only need to calculate those once, I think. Should be true, should be true. Uh, Let's see. So when they're drawing, and then there's some sort of vertex action. So we draw the vertex action. Hey, eh? Vertex action. Draw. What does base draw do? Base draw. This is, what is this? This is draw node. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Define several places. This is cubism draw node, and I. Uh, this is cubism renderer draw, texture draw node. Wasn't that? That's the original thing I was in, wasn't it? What is this? This is cubism renderer draw node. This is cubism. Oh, this is the same thing. All right, get out of here. But then this is also cubism renderer draw node. Excuse me? This texture shader draw node. Wasn't there another thing I can go to? Cubism drawable, I guess. So this, okay. Actually, have I looked at this before? I feel like I've looked at this, but I just didn't think about it. <laughs> I don't really know what a lot of these mean though. So it's, Initialize. I, I feel like that's kind of an OSU framework thing because I think the OSU developers are British, possibly Australian and or from New Zealand. So they, they use the, the English, <laughs> the British English spelling of a lot of words. Initialize, not initialize. Buffer sub data. Uh, I just need to know when do when does OSU framework bind shader attributes? But I, I guess it doesn't matter in this case, right? So I have a bunch of shaders already defined, but I think if I'm going to try to emulate how they're doing shaders, the way that they do shader is or shaders is um like so. Like so. Hold on, give me one second. I need to pull these up somewhere else. So I have a list of just everything here. So I've been, I've been referencing their implementation since it, since it is MIT licensed, so I am allowed to do this. Um, so I'm pulling this up on my other screen. See, this is where having multiple screens is really nice. <laughs> so your main work screen your code screen, and then just like your documentation screen, essentially. Um, so let's see, we'll need a few things. So this is normal fragment, normal fragment dot shader. Yeah, I think we're just gonna write a bunch of shaders really quick. Yeah, pop this over here. So this is not how you would generally do like a Godot shader. Uh, let me see. How do you define a Godot shader again? I, I always forget. Shader, shader type, spatial, render mode. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> spatial shaders, what, 
What shader types do we have for render mode? So shader type spatial and then render mode. What render modes do you have? Please, sir. I don't I don't know what shaders I want or what render modes I want. Mm. Mm, render mode. Oh, these are all the render modes? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um, that's tough. I think... Ooh. I think I want blend mix. Blend mix, okay, cool. And then void, this needs to be, I define this to be a fragment one, so that's okay. So there needs to be a fragment one and then a corresponding vertex one because I'm not always going to, I don't think I always apply the same shader every single time. So I think the way that vignette does it is that they apply multiple shaders. Like they kind of build up a shader stack, I guess. So I th think that's what I'm gonna need to do as well, is that we'll always just run the, f the vertex shader first and then just kind of plug in <laughs> whatever shader we need to after that. So there's a lot of kind of runtime shader magic, I suppose. So according to Godot, what are the built-ins that I have? I should have a UV. Okay, so UV is still a vector too, so that matches. And then the vertex. Wait. Maybe it's position. Maybe it's position. Hold on. I remember I was, um, I remember I was looking at this before. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll figure it out. So the varying, I believe that's just the UV. That's a equivalent to a Godot UV variable. I guess we'll, we'll follow their nomenclature. So they're doing Hungarian notation. That's all right. Nothing against a little bit of a little Hungarian notation. What's a little hunger, Hungarian notation between friends, etc., etc. All right, so that's okay. Those are our two uniforms plus our V texture coordinate, which is just our UV, which we don't need to pass in. Um, so vector four, color, two sRGB. I don't think I need to do that. We just need to do texture, um, then S, no, U texture zero plus our UV, and then times our base color. Right? Please. Invalid arguments for built-in function. Eh? What are you looking for? Hold on. I thought this took, um, so texture, what are you looking for? Sampler 2D, oh, this needs to be a sampler 2D. Ah, oh, typoed. I was looking at the wrong variable. So this is U texture zero and then UV. Sampler 2D, there we go. And then color is a new vector for of color. RGB, so we swizzle it times, times the color alpha. Then there's pass in the color alpha again. That seems a bit weird. Can't I just do this in one step? Also, what is your problem? Con constants cannot be modified. Oh, can you not modify the color here? No, no that's an in out. Yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> constants cannot be modified. 
That's an in-out variable color. Hey. Eh? This is in the fragment shader as well. Constants cannot be modified. So these are the built-ins. In out vector for color. That's not a it's not a built-in. Or no, that's not a constant. If it was an invariable, it would be a constant. Hmm. Let me see. Fragment. Oh, these are. Oh, this is a, in the fragment shader. These are vertex built-ins. Oh. All right. Oh, okay. So it needs to be all the albedo because it's in the fragment shader. Interesting. And then this requires, oh, that's tough. Okay. So there's the in color. I'm, I'm looking at the fragment shader for their, their stuff, right? That's the fragment shader, yeah. So this is okay. I think we can, I think you can just swizzle like this and then multiply by color A, then that's okay. Yeah, and then we, we need to set the alpha to color A like that. Then that's probably good enough for our fragment shader. Then we'll create a new script, not a new script, a new resource called shader. This will be normal vertex dot shader because that's just valid for you to do is you can split up your shaders like that even though i don't think it's recommended you do this it's okay so there's there's our normal vertex shader so we kind of construct a shader on the fly a full shader on the fly so this is void vertex so it always goes vertex and then fragment. And so I need to remember that the varying gets pushed to our fragments, essentially. Well, not always, now that I'm thinking about it. But that's okay. Uh, I do need to limit the amount of varying that I use. So if possible, I can store in another Gizzo built in. <laughs> Uh, this could be tough. This could be tough. Yeah, because I don't think I can access varyings across files in Godot shader language. Yeah, so that'd be tough. <clears throat> Let's see. So I think this only requires one uniform, which is the Matrix 4. I heard that movie is kind of boring, by the way. But this is a, a Mat 4, Matrix 4. Don't really know what goes inside of that. And GL position, I believe, is just the vertex attribute. So U matrix times. I think this is like this is just. Uh, is this how it works? That might not be enough information for it to figure out. So isn't a vertex in spatial terms? No. Oh, because you don't have. You can write to the position, but you don't have enough information on, I guess the, the the stuff. Yeah, invalid arguments to operator, matrix four, vector three. So it always needs to go matrix and then the vector, but I need a vector four. So which one of these is a vector four? Um, so this is your camera matrix. Probably don't want that. Ah, eh, we might want that. We might want that. Hmm. We might want that, yeah. So, see that, this is something I don't really understand. Like what is model space versus world space versus view space versus clip space? Whoa. Uh. 
it says use as possible, so we're gonna use <laughs> we're gonna use this. And then I think we want to swizzle it. So R X Y Z. No. Do these not exist? R G B. Or it's not really swizzling, but Huh. Can you not do this? You should be able to swizzle it like that. That's not really swizzling. Swizzling is like R R R. <laughs> Invalid member for material for expression. Huh? Hold on. Yeah, so you should have an RGB. Invalid member for mat for expression. Or is, not, is, is that something that you can't do? So model view matrix. Hmm, okay, hold on. We might need to do this in a few, <laughs> a few passes. Hmm. Where you might not be able to do this, however, I, th I think you should be able to do this. So this is a mat4 uh, result, right? And then we can set the vertex equal to vertex r is equal to res r. Is that not valid? Invalid member for mat4 expression. Yeah? It does exist here, am I crazy? If you multiply, uh, I guess I need to multiply by like a, an act. Oh, that's a, that's not a, that's not a vector for, that's a mat for. Mm. Okay. So that doesn't actually help me. That's tough. So vertex to this. So vertex is only a vector three. But we can kind of mess with this. Actually, how do you generate a, just a regular vector three from a mat four? Hmm. Because isn't a, a matrix four, that's a, is it four vector threes? What is it, what is a mat four? Mat four. It's a four, oh, it's a four by four matrix. That's tough. <laughs> um, I don't really know. We, we can try to just use the matrix or the vertex again, though that's not super correct. In truth, I might not be able to do this at all. Or I, I would need someone who knows more about this than I do. So vector four of vertex zero. So we just kind of wiggle it. We kind of coerce it into a, we coerce the vertex into a vector four and then just extract out the RGB again. I feel like that's incorrect, but what do I know? Then the UVY is equal to one minus UVY. Oh, okay, so this is how they do their inversion. I might not need that, because I'm, I'm already inverting it in the original script. So here, yeah, now that I'm looking at this with a fresh eye, like I already invert the, the vertices. <laughs> so this shader might not be necessary, but that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, but th those are your two basic shaders. So actually, I think if I append these at runtime, so I create a new material, or I create two new materials, I think. Hold on. So I create a new 3D scene. Boom, boom. Create a new mesh instance. 
and then just kind of pretend that we have a mesh. So we'll, we'll call it a capsule mesh, right? And then on that mesh, we can set the material. So call it a new shader material. Am I able to add, how to add multiple materials to the same mesh? So we can add a new shader. So we'll add the new vertex shader. Kind of goes away. The next pass will be a second shader material with the quick load, the fragment shader again. Okay, so I feel like if I add this to my scene, this is gonna break. I feel like the fragment shader is okay. Oh, there's no texture. Ah, there's no texture. Ah, okay, hold on. We can we can just add like a kind of a BS texture to it. So this requires a shader param. There's also no base color as well. Hold on. Yeah, so this needs a texture, so we'll quick load in, I don't know, just icon PNG. <laughs> we'll make it work. Uh, we can, we can we'll quick load in a bigger texture, I guess. So you can have that. Let's see. Shader param base color. I don't know, dude. Are these colors, they are zero to one. Okay, cool. <laughs> Looks a bit sus. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then the shader param for the second one, the U matrix. What is the U matrix in vignette terms? So this is the fragment shader for their thing. Oh wait, no, their thing requires the texture. What is the U matrix for this? So does that mean that this matrix could potentially change? What happens when this changes? Oh. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> so I think the, I don't know actually, like the, what is, what is happening? Why does the texture not change appropriately? It can, it can potentially kind of wiggle outside of itself. It's a bit bizarre. So the first pass, <clears throat> the first pass is just the matrix stuff. Yeah, so you can wiggle it, I suppose, which is really cool. And then this is just the base color, um, which makes sense. Well, the, the fragment shader stuff is the stuff that makes the most sense to me, right? Like that, that makes sense. So we'll, we, we set the albedo to whatever the texture is, whatever, set the, you know, the, the visibility of the material, right? But is the vertex shader not applied to this as well? Hmm. Or is the, the vertex here, is this incorrect? Hmm. Or what if we just, oh, how strange. <laughs> hmm, something doesn't seem right here. So what are they doing? What are they doing with the vertex shader, man? So they have some sort of uniform matrix that they pass in. And I, I think they pass it in here. So they, they also have just access to the clipping thingy, which I don't have access to. A clipping buffer, which is kind of a, an old technology. I might have to use, and so from what I've seen, every single implementation uses a clipping, clipping buffer, a clip buffer, whereas Godot doesn't have a clip buffer. It doesn't expose it to the user at the very least. Hmm. 
Draw info. What is draw info matrix? Oh, that's good. Um, <laughs> where does draw info matrix come from? Oh, this comes from OSU framework. Fantastic. Just what I wanted to hear. Okay, so OSU framework. Yeah. Or this is like draw info. Hopefully, you'll just send me to it. Yeah, there's draw info. Draw info. And I think it has. Draw info, draw info, draw info. What was I looking at? Draw info matrix. So that should be like a static thingy. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, it's a matrix three. Ooh. What? How? Why? Draw info is a matrix, so it's a matrix four constructed from a matrix three. And it looks like it's just the identity matrix as well. What? <laughs> what? Why? Ooh. I think that's a, I think that doesn't do anything. Or where is draw info created? For this, right? It looks like they're just using um, like that little. Is this static? Is draw info just static for them? Ooh. Is draw info static? No. Ooh. What? So ugh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Like who wrote this, dude? So, OSU framework extensions, matrix extensions. Where is it? Matrix extensions, matrix extensions. Hmm. Shear from left, right? No. Okay. Where does this come from? Type extensions, not matrix extensions. Type extensions. So this probably contains, nope. Where is the, eh? where does this come from? Is it in the same repository or the same folder as, uh, as you? Mm. Where does matrix four come from? That's what I want to know. God, I, that's, that's why like having non-relative imports is such a huge pain. Or not relative, non, non-absolute imports. Like, I don't know where this comes from. Where is matrix four? Like this is, this contains, this uses a matrix three and then somehow produces a matrix four according to vignette, right? New matrix four. Where did these come from? Let me see. Sys it's probably not from system collections. Oh, is it from Osu TK? Um, I'm gonna be slightly perturbed if that's the, if that's the case. I have a bad feeling that's from Osu TK. <laughs> All right, Osu TK. Osu TK. TK. Oh. Osu, oh, don't don't give me stock information. I don't need stock information. All right, got it. All right, so Osu oh, TK. Looks like everything is just. Oh geez. All right, so there there is your matrix four. So you can construct a matrix four from a matrix three, I think. Yeah. And then it just creates like basically an identity matrix, I think. Okay, so I think I don't need this part. We can just say like, eh, we don't need it. <laughs> Call it a day. So there is your vertex. This is your fragment shader. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, right? And so we've, it's basically just like a really inefficient shader thing but the the interest the, the more interesting part is that we will 
be replacing the fragment shader depending on several implementation thingies. All right. Oh no. Well, no, and the render the render priority of each material will go is going to have to be the same as well. Or what happens if we render priority? Higher priority objects will be sorted in fronts. Yeah, okay, I didn't think that made sense. Yeah, because they just display on top of each other. Yeah, because they're because these these aren't related in the in the slightest. Yeah. Or I guess they. As long as this is a next pass, that's probably okay. So, let's see. Let's just try to make this work then. So there's mesh set surface material. How do I set the, the next pass of a material? So material, next pass. Oh, okay, that's just how you do it. And then it needs to be set equal to another material. Of course. <laughs> and this material contains yet another material. You know, insert, you know, yo dog. I heard you like materials in your materials. Hmm. Oh, and someone's already found a bug with lip syncing as well. That's good. Hmm. Might be a, a Linux specific bug, but I need to check that out. Uh, hold on, and we can let me let me fix this really quick. I, I just noticed that this is not working as expected. There we go. He's done it. So okay, so we we get rid of the all this material stuff. And instead, we'll do var material. This will be a new shader material. So I think we need two shader materials. So this is, hold on, boom. So you'll have your V material, and then you'll have your fragment material. Something like that. And then we'll, I'm gonna see if we can do it via shaders. Um, if we can't, then I think I'll need to kind of roll my own solution uh, to at least, you know, kind of implement like a pseudo clipping buffer, clip buffer, stencil buffer, I should say. Cause the clip, I think the clip buffer is just this, is just a stencil buffer, I think. Where stencil buffer is an open geo kind of thing. Well, and also like a, I think I feel like I've seen that in the Vulcan API too when I was working with that. <sighs> so let's see. I think based off of, let me see. Context in context. What's a context in the vignette thingy? So there's masking context. Oh no. Where does source come from then? Source is, they cast it to cubism renderer. So is, are any of these a cubism renderer? Is this, this is a cubism drawable. Do you have a cubism renderer? Okay. So it's a partial, oh God, I hate partial classes. It makes it so hard to figure out what is what. <laughs> Why would you do this? But there's the model, right? Cube isn't drawable, don't need that. Um, so it's the, the base source. So if I remember correctly, here's Cubism render and then Cubism render draw node. Does this have a source? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Textured shader draw node. Is that in Osu TK? Please don't be in Osu TK. What the heck is a? It's probably in graphics, huh? 
So texture, shader, draw node. Texture, shader, draw node. Texture, shader, draw node. So these are all OpenGL thingies. Mm. Yeah. ES3 methods. Okay. Where does where is textured shader draw node come from? I need to figure out what base source is, right? Because it, it, it just runs the... Oh, okay, cubism renderer. Wait, no, this is cubism renderer. All right, what do you do? This model equals model, yeah. But then when does, she, when, when does the source get... Uh... What? Cubism renderer implements drawable. Is it an Osu TK? Please don't. No, not like this. Um, is there a drawable here? Graphics drawable? No. Ooh. Drawable? Display? I'm dying. <laughs> This is an OS. It, it can't be an OS2 graphics. I, I just. I, please don't be in one of these. There's a lot of things it could be. <laughs> um, if I downloaded the repository, I could just run a, a find on it, I suppose. But it's always kind of hard to tell, like when when they are doing the, you know, the Java thing where they have one thing per file or multiple things per file. I hope they're doing the, the Java thing. It looks like they're doing the Java thing. All right, that's fine. I, I rescind my, my waning, my, my whinging and complaining. All right, so that's, all right, OSU graphics or OSU framework graphics. What is this one? This is cubism renderer draw node. Don't need that. Um, Graphics shaders. So it might be in graphics. This is, yeah, this is already in graphics. What, is, what the heck is it? Oh, there's the, no, drawable, drawable, vignettes. Wait a minute. Oh, that's not, that's not multiple inheritance. That's, um, it inherits from drawable and then implements the interface I buffer drawable. Ah. Ah. Where does source come from? Exclude from dynamic. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Something I, I've, I've kind of noticed about this OSU framework thing when I'm looking through it is that they don't define all their variables at the very top which is very annoying, <laughs> in my opinion. I just, just put them all at the top. So I, I know like what things that this struct has. Bas it's a basically a struct in my world. So source, source. Uh, invalidation source. Is there just like a normal source somewhere, please? No. Oh, no. But this is a, this is a drawable, right? But it doesn't implement. It doesn't, it doesn't call the super, um, the super constructor. What? Source, source, source. Cubism render draw node, yeah. Ooh. Huh? What am I looking at? So it's drawn. Um, drawable. Texture, sh no. Texture shader draw node. Wait. Texture shader draw Wait a minute, no, this just casts it to a cubism renderer. What the heck? Ooh, I buffer drawable? Ooh. 
What are you talking about? Texture shader draw node. Okay, there we go. We can look at that. Source. All right. I'm mad. Wasn't I looking at... No, I wasn't looking at draw node. Hold on. Draw node. I was looking at... Drawable. Draw node. Source. There is the source. Okay. So where are you used? So it needs to be some sort of eye drawable. Okay. Yeah. I could have guessed. Um, draw node. The drawable to draw this with. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This doesn't help. This doesn't help in this in the slightest. Okay. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. The thing to draw. So I feel like I've seen masking context before. I don't know when this is constructed. And unfortunately, well, maybe we can see. So there's the... Uh, okay, there we go. Bring me here. So it's in cubism module. Yeah, I've, I've, I've looked at this before. And so the... Cubism renderer takes in the cubism model. Was it some sort of composite drawable? Uh, see, I, I've had my code called like difficult before, but like this is just like, what is this? Um, let's see. So there's your cubism renderer. Miss, okay, so a set internal, yeah. Let's use set a read only variable, yeah. Um, large texture store, yeah. Okay, so this has all your cubism thing thingies, things. Uh, all right. So there. Okay, so this is your source, I suppose. So uh, on the model, on the model. There's no model on this. Okay. Um. Mm. <laughs> So the, the 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 cubism model should or the yeah the cubism model should be the the thing source masking contexts. Do you have a masking context? You do. Okay, masking contexts. Sure, and this is presumably. See, I. I Whoever wrote this is um, this is like it's it's kind of it, it reminds me of like C style coding where you just kind of define your variables wherever you need them. All right. Well, okay. When is this written to? When do you create your masking context? All right. So context first or defaults. So for. What? <laughs> it's like the knots is just throwing me for a loop. The knots. So C masks select where M ID Ooh. accept mask IDs. Ooh. What? Any, so you want the first. All right, so we can we can run through this backwards. So any means uh, just take the first one that we find. Doesn't matter. So if you have multiple that match, you will get one at random or near random. We're not matching against any of the mask IDs, which is a point or two in array. Okay. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, and then we're selecting the MID. F 
from C masks. Where is where? What is C? What is what is C? C C C C C. Where where did you get C from? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. This is the temporary variable C from masking. Con <sighs> okay. Oh, okay. So this is just if it runs over it again. We're just checking to see if there's already a context. Why? <laughs> I, I guess, sure, you can do that. That's okay. They're like this feels like the kind of code that I need to like actually go through and like annotate it. Like I what I used to do back when I was like a, a fresh programmer was I would like kind of run through the code. I would take take like a screenshot of the code and like annotate it by hand, basically. Because this is confusing. But sure. So you look for a context. If the context... Wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, they assign a new variable inside of the add function. What? <laughs> sure, I guess. That's... That's always struck me as very confusing, but sure. I hate, I, I, I dislike it when code does that. It makes it hard to read. It does technically reduce the number of lines because they. I've also noticed that they don't add the curly brackets. Hello, Bumdi, hello, hello. Check this out. Oh, hold on, <laughs> it's broken. As always, check this out. Uh, one of these. Ooh, hold on. Just slap this back in here. Uh, slap this back in here. Look at this. He's done it. So this is what I've gotten to load so far. So this is a live 2D model. It's not running, or and it's also not tracking anything right now, which is fine, right? But w how it works is that I've written some Rust code to link against, well, it's not linking against. It's just compiling it in. So there's, someone else already wrote a loader in Rust for a mock 3 file, which is what the live 2D files are named for whatever reason. Um, but it's unmaintained, so I forked it and then just kind of slapped it into my own project. And then from there, what I've done, yeah, it is commercial software, yeah. So there is like an open source, somewhat compatible license. It'll just be in a different repository. Yeah, it's, it's simultaneously, I'm using the SDK, but usually you would use it in the official like viewer or one of the licensed applications. But since I'm not distributing it, um, I think it's okay. So here, here's the plan for how I'm going to make this work is, uh, so this is my binding. So this is loader RS, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's called Godot Cubism. Yeah, so here's the repository, right? So this is just my binding to it. Doesn't contain any of their code. So if you want to use it inside of this application, what you are going to have to do is something like this. So let me, let me you know, the old trusty paint tool. So open C face GD, right? So open C face GD will always ship with, uh, We'll always ship with uh, a mock. Should probably make this bigger, huh? So this, it'll always ship with a mock live 2D library. So this will just be the mock. Live 2D mock, right? So if you want to use live 2D, Inside of OpenSeaFaceGD, what you will have to do 
is first grab the bindings. Wait, hold on. Oh no, hold on. Oh, you might need to compile this yourself, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I can actually distribute this. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, hold on. <laughs> this has just occurred to me, because in order to compile these bindings... Uh, you'll need to go through like a... It's, it's, I see. I see. So I can, I can redistribute this, but it'll have to be in like several parts. So you'll need to grab my bindings. So like Godot Cubism. You know, from GitHub. And then separate bindings from uh, my fork of, or not even my fork, it could be my, my fork though, but like Cubism. RS pre-compiled with Live2D SDK. Just a quick question, planning to import models or is it runtime too? Yeah, it's runtime. It's runtime. Oh no, but that's tough. I guess no, it this will have to be just like a separate thing under a different license. Because the, the license will be have to be kind of weird. That's okay. Compiled with live to the SDK. Yeah, so it's all runtime. Like this right now is all runtime as well. So if, if you take a look at the code, the code is actually free and open source at this point in time as well, except it doesn't contain the, the, the bindings. You'll need to compile those yourself. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Is that a lot of this stuff, you'll just need to compile it yourself. I don't know why I'm loading it from GitHub when I just have it open in GitHub. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't like, yeah, it does have custom renderers. That's the hardest part. That's the part that I'm struggling with right now. Because you might have noticed uh, that most people don't have four arms. Uh, and I can tell you that this model right here does not, it's not supposed to have four arms. It's supposed to only have two. So, what I have done, right, is I've written the loader, and we can get rid of this. Basically, you get the idea, right? So, you'll replace the mock with uh, Godot Cubism, with the binary from my repository, and that's, that's just how it's going to have to work, because I'm not allowed to officially redistribute. Not like that anyways. I think I, well, I'm not sure. I've seen other people redistribute it because the, the repository that I'm looking at also redistributes live 2D linked code, but that's okay. Um, but check this out. So here's the flow. So we have um, the Rust code. So the Rust code has a factory class because in GD native, you're not allowed to pass constructors, which is tough. So we have a cubism model factory uh, that just creates the, the cubism thingy. Oh, you know what? This is wrong. It's not really a cubism loader. <laughs> if it's SDK, you can release projects containing it if it's free. It's not free. It's under the cubism open source thingy. Open source license, which is not truly open source. So check this out. This is the repository, of course. Um, and then there is their... Ooh. Live 2D open source license, which is the the toughest part about it. Yeah, I, I've had multiple people tell me that like it's not compatible, or I'm, I'm like not allowed to redistribute it. That is not true. So I'm not allowed to modify it. I'm not allowed to publish expandable applications, um, which is to say, as far as I understand, anyways, is that an expandable application is something that allows you to download additional stuff. 
Um, I don't allow you to download additional stuff. I don't sell you anything, right? This is more like to be like in-app purchases from their illegal lease. And no, no diversion of sample, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. This is probably the, the hardest thing, which is no combination with incompatible license, but that's probably okay. If anything, I can always just take off the license and then this won't be open source. Yeah. Basically, as long as I don't sell anything with it, you know, and as, as long as it's in a different repository under a different license or no license at all, or just under their solo license, I think it's okay. Yeah, that, that, that's where the, the paint drawing came from. <laughs> Is, uh, I'll always ship OpenSea Face with a, a mock implementation. And then if you want to have it, then I, I can have the OpenSea Face GD scan at runtime when I, at startup to see if the file exists, if the GD native library exists. If it does, then we'll use it. If not, then we'll just use the mock and then not allow you to load in live 2D stuff. But yeah. So the, the, the kind of the flow goes is we create the factory, then we create the loader, which creates the model stuff. And then the reason why we need to have this instead of using like null values for model JSON on res, and in Rust terms, a null value would be closer to like an optional, an option interesting if you can manage it to run like all the skin deformers and such yeah I'm, I'm getting to that right so that's why I'm, I'm referencing the vignette project is that they're doing a lot of the skin deformation running well it's not even that I, I think I can get it running without uh, shaders which is what they're using for skin deformation right so the, the hardest part is just um, this, well, not this part, this is the easy part, which is just loading it in. So we just load in, we use the Rust library, which links against a C library. I don't handle any of that. This is the, this is kind of the hardest part. I actually asked about this on the Godot Discord and got no answers, which is, you know, as expected. I feel like a lot of the people on the Godot Discord are like non-programmers for whatever reason. Like a, a lot of the things that I see are like, um, you know, how do I like, when I was, when I'm looking through like a lot of the GD native dev stuff, it's like, why isn't my GD native project building? And it's like, oh, you know, can't find headers. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just headers. Yeah. It's, it's people who like the idea of game development, but it's like, as I want, you know, performance, but I don't want to learn anything about you know, lower level stuff. Okay, well, okay, sure. <laughs> or it's like, um, yeah, you can see here, I asked in advanced too, or even in like regular advanced. Like this is, this is an actual hard question. Can surface materials be somehow gotten with a ray cast? That sounds difficult. Well, you can see here in advanced too, where I asked my question, you can see here, oh baby. This is what this used to look like, by the way. But I, I found out that if you want to apply multiple shaders to the same material, you actually have to do it in 3D. You can't do it in 2D, um, which is going to make things difficult. But you, like, look at this question. It's like, you know, how do you like connect a signal? Where is it? <laughs> or like, what's the difference between adding a child node and instancing a scene in the UI editor? Uh, what? It's the same thing. That's like, that's a beginner question. It's all these people that think that they're like, ooh, this is so tough. What are you talking about? This is not tough at all. It's like the, what was it called? The, the something effects where you, your lack of knowledge leads you to think that you're smarter than you, than you are. Like, from what I've seen, most of the people, if you're not asking a developer on the Godot Discord, you're not going to get a good answer. <laughs> Or like a Godot, a Godot developer, like one of the people who actually works on the engine. Most of the people are just kind of there for fashion, if that makes any sense. Right. And by fashion, I mean like, uh, this is, this is just me like ranting at this point, being salty, but 
<laughs> I apologize. You and Godot devs don't know someone until they look at the source? Yeah, well, it's like... If you, or people who have, you know, made actual games, I suppose, or lot actual things in Godot. But most people on a lot of these, I guess, help forums, like Reddit, r slash Godot, uh, people on the Discord, it seems like. People in Rocket Chat, the Godot Rocket Chat, seem to be pretty knowledgeable. But like on Discord and Reddit, it's just people who like want to be seen as, you know, a, a game dev, but they don't actually do any game dev. So they'll just kind of like post nonsense that's like f phrased in a really complicated way, but they're actually asking like, you know, why doesn't my code run? <laughs> it's like, oh, did you edit the scene tree? No. Do I need to? To add it to the scene tree. No, it's, it, that's 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 something that kind of gets under my skin unreasonably so, because I've run into a lot of people as well. It's like. They, they, a lot of friends, or I, I quote unquote friends when I was in school would be like, hey, can you teach me like guitar? I'd be like, yeah, I can teach you guitar. That's easy, no problem. And it's like, all right, here's a guitar. And they're like, oh, this hurts. And I was like, yeah, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> Your fingers are really gonna hurt for like the first like month. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then they'll go around afterwards and I'll like telling all the friends like, yeah, Tim's teaching me guitar. And I'm like, yeah. And then they'll like continue to suck at it. And it's like, oh. Tim must not be a very good teacher. It's like, they're not practicing. It's not my fault. <laughs> uh, you want to you wanna be like seen as a guitarist, but you don't want to put any work. And then you just blame me for your failings. Anyways, that's, that's the story of my uh, music background. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm trying to do here is I need to figure out the where all the masks exist at. So here's our debug thing. But yeah, what we do, so an issue let me ask, I'm trying to interpolate the position of a rigid body 2D, yes. You are, you are trying to interpolate the position, yes. And child rigid body look like it's freezing its process on lots. So I let go of parents interpolate. Hmm. That sounds, I'm not sure actually. So you are you are lurping. Are you lurping the the position? So like, what are you? Are you doing like a lerp? Uh, you know, my body dot position to somewhere, right? Some position, and then there are child thingies on there as well. Curve interpolate baked. Uh, interpolate baked. What is that? <laughs> interpolate baked. What is this? I'm not familiar with that at all. Interpolate baked returns the y value for the point that would exist. The baked cache. Oh, interesting. So you're using a curve 2D. I'm assuming then. So curve 2D. An interpolate baked. Okay, so I'm I'm assuming would this work if you used uh, just regular? Does it work when you use regular interpolate? Because what what I'm thinking it's happening is it's it's baking the interpolation of all objects. It, yeah, so it's it's. It's baking the interpolation of your objects, which means that it stores the position. It pre-calculates the position of all your objects at run before runtime, right? So interpolate baked will always be faster, but if you want things to change while it's your, you know, if you want things, your child nodes to change while you're interpolating across the curve, uh, then you'll need to use probably just regular interpolate. Yeah. Otherwise, it's always going to be using the pre-calculated positions. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Because this should only be the in baked interpolation for that curve. Never mind. 
<laughs> Never mind. Ignore that. It should just be the yeah. It should be the interpolation for that curve, not for all the objects on it. Hmm. So you you are. I don't know. Like where where is your interpolation function? Are you interpolating in your process function? And then inside of your or you know your physics process function, uh, I'm assuming. So if you're interpolating in your physics process function, then you should be fine as long as you're not hitting it with like a, a while loop or a for loop inside of your phys physics process function. Yeah, this is this is the complicated part, by the way. <laughs> you can view all that if you want, but basically I construct a mesh uh, from scratch. And so we have vertex positions, vertex UVs, and indices. And so you can see here that we I need to flip the indices because they are OpenGL positions. So OpenGL renders upside down for some reason. And so we, we create the mesh, add the surface from that, and then there you go. That's how this works, is that it's reads through a buffer of just like raw numbers <laughs> and then gives me this how nice and so all of these positions are actually just like on a big sprite sheet so the fact that it even renders correctly is pretty cool in my book to position by integrated physics integrated physics integrated physics what does that mean are you not using a... Oh, no, you're using rigid body 2Ds. Hmm. Not kinematic bodies 2Ds. That seems a bit tough. If you're using rigid body 2Ds, rigid body 2Ds, right, then you should have... Uh, are you... Where, where are you putting it? Are you putting it in integrate for... Is it integrate forces? Yeah, okay. So, you're, yeah, you're doing it in integrate forces. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Well, you don't need to do... You don't need to... You shouldn't need to do anything extra for your, your child thingies. Right? You shouldn't need to do anything for your child positions, I think. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have you tried changing your physics engine from uh, bullet to Godot physics? Where the physics thing is? It might be a physics thing, I don't know. If I can find out where the, the physics stuff is. Yeah, physics engine. Yeah, so you can use default, which is, I think it's bullet, or you can use Godot physics. It's Godot physics. Have you tried with bullet? Even though I think they're changing to uh, Godot physics and Godot 4. Uh, I usually just use default. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll work on this. Nice. I will keep working on this. My findings later. Very good. Hmm. I will keep working on this. Uh. Even though it's very niche, it is one of the more popular things to use. Hmm. Because the my plan, at least, is to hopefully expand the reach of uh of this application so that more people use it. That would be pretty cool. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Super mask in masks. If masks has mask, then we want to print something. So what I'm trying to do is I need to figure out how the masking works in Live 2D. 
So every single material here, every single material or every single body part, every single individual body part has an associated mask on it. So I need to figure out, does each mask, is every single mask unique or do some things share masks? I'm not sure. So we want to append just the single mask. Hmm, mask exists. Mask. All right, let's see if this works. I just want to see. We're just printing stuff at this point. Oh no, they sh some something share masks. <laughs> no, some of these things share masks. That's not good. That's not good at all. What do you do if they share masks? How many masks are there? I, mean, I guess we can just hit it with a, you know, a final print masks, right? Ooh. Oh, because it does it for each drawable as well. What is Master's Clip Plane Sprites? Do you know how those work, by the way? <laughs> yes, by the... And also, yes, they are clip... They are sprites for clipping, but how do they work in Godot? Because I thought I need a stencil buffer, but I... Yeah, it's like... It, I, I do need to clip, or a stencil. But Godot does not expose that to the user. Or at least that's how the... That's how the Rust implementation works. They use a stencil buffer. But yeah, some some of these share masks, which is tough. All right, so there's only three masks, by the way. Um, Godot 4 has, as far as I know, not Godot 3. I don't think Godot 4... Well, Godot 4 might have it, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I saw a... There's an open PR for Godot 3 to add stencil buffers, I think. Um... But that's from like 2020. And so the, the thing that they were blocked on was that the implementer for the stencil buffers in Godot 3 wasn't able to port it to Godot 4 because they didn't have a, a GPU that could support Vulkan. Oh, is there a new blog post for, for Godot? Ooh, let me see. GodotEngine.org News. Maybe not. <laughs> no old ones? All right, well, okay. <laughs> I got excited. I thought there was a new blog post. Usually, my uh, my Android phone, because I'm a total Google shill. I do just use the Google, uh, I use the Google launcher. Yeah, that's what it's called. Where you can swipe to the, you swipe to the right, AKA you go left and then get just curated news from Google. I actually really like that. I know it's an Apple style of design, but it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. How do I how do I render masks? I might need to download the Rust sample project and see how they do it. Cause that's tough. Or actually, do I have information on which drawable this is? So looking at this, Cubism Factory, this is just my mapper for uh, for drawables. Hmm. So all these objects come across as JSON and I just use this to kind of serialize it to, uh, to a Godot object. I don't know why I was working a year, like a year ago. The swipe, the swipe news thing, I thought they removed it. Uh, it still works on my, I have a, I have a Galaxy S21 though, so that might be it. <laughs> Before you say like, why would you spend so much money? Uh, my, my carrier was like, do you want like a Galaxy S21 for like 400 bucks? And I was like, yeah, and like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Here you go. I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
I got the the latest phone for like five hundred dollars off. Sick. <laughs> of course, I'm also locked in for like uh, on their payment plan as well, but. <laughs> Or I'm not locked in, but I'm also locked in for like another contract, but that's okay. I only pay, my, my company pays for my phone contract anyways. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Not really my problem. Print masks, and I think we also want to, I think we want to print drawable Index? Am I not in drawable anymore? Drawable bid? I think index doesn't actually refer to index. I think it refers to body part. No, it actually is the index. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know how to read this though. So are, mas are masks always the last ones? No, they aren't. They're pretty close to always being the last ones, but that's... Because there's... there's... <sighs> Alright, so I can't make an assumption either. I feel like I need to like run through every single one of them. Like I need to scan through every single drawable. So each drawable, so you can see that there's 83... 83 drawables, which means there's 83, three, 83 things being drawn on screen. There, so there are three, 83 meshes currently on screen, which is crazy. If you're, if you're asking me about it, that's crazy that there's 83 meshes on screen, but that's just how it works. And then three of these are masks, mask meshes. Uh, so I'm assuming that there's two meshes for these arms. So I need to like undisplay those somehow. Is that a 3D model projected with 2D sprites? It is I don't really know. Like it's it's a it's it's 2D. Like this is because it's this information is um meant to be rendered in OpenGL, I think. Um, what happens is that OpenGL is already like full 3D, so it just kind of works. <laughs> but yes, it is a, it's a 2D, it's a 2D model rendered in 3D using a mesh because all the information comes to me as a mesh. But you can't see the backside of her. You want to bet on that? <laughs> what if we do? I'm not. I, I think you can. You might be able to see the back. I'm not sure. Is action pressed? UI. I don't know. Uh, UI accepts. Roots. All right. This is the hard part. I forget. I think it's rotate Y. No, we can rotate by pi over four. You want to bet on that? Oh, you are totally correct. <laughs> you can't see the back, but you can. Uh, but I can just rotate it. Yeah, you're right. I thought this is double sided. Maybe it's not double sided. Look at that. How neat. <laughs> Anyways, that's okay. The reason why it has to be 3D is because I might need to apply more than one shader at a time. So that's that's tough. That's tough. Hmm. So I wonder what the what 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 do the masks do? <laughs> That's what I'm still kind of confused about. Is there a, is there a specification for live TV? Because no one seems to 
No one, no one seems to know what they do, unfortunately. More than one shader meaning past shader? Yeah, so basically, right, what this application does... Oh no, this is vignette. Vignette Live 2D. So vignettes, whatever the heck this is, they have more stars than me. <laughs> So I guess they're they're just more networked. I guess they do just have more people working on it as well. But and they also use Media Pipe, which is neat. I would like to use Media Pipe as well. But the way that this application works, they use uh, they're using OSU, the OSU framework, and then looking at their shader stuff. So if you look at Vignette, oh, this is Encore, which they're rewriting in Stride, which is very strange. Um, which is the alternative C sharp game engine. So let's see, is it, it's in vignette game, graphics, ooh, no. Vignette, live 2D, hello Felipe, hello, hello. I'm currently just kind of rambling about the pain that is this application here, look at that. True VTuber stuff. But basically, how, how this works, I think, is that they, they apply multiple shaders at the same time. So this model, how it should actually be rendered is that uh, there's a... Anime. <laughs> Shiva? Isn't it Kali that has four arms? And then Shiva may or may not have many arms, depending on the depiction. I don't really know. But yeah. In Mortal Kombat? Isn't it? I, I thought it was Goro that had multiple arms. Isn't, isn't Goro the one with multiple arms? Or is, is the Shiva actual thing? Goro... Mortal Kombat. Yeah. That's his wife? Oh. Who's Shiva? <laughs> I, 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 haven't played a, I haven't played Mortal Kombat recently. Is Shiva new? I only know Goro. Oh. Mortal Kombat 3. I haven't played Mortal Kombat 3. Okay, that makes sense. I've only played Mortal Kombat 1. <laughs> I've only played Mortal Kombat 1, and I thought it was pretty bad. Interesting, I didn't know that. Actually, what is Goro in? Is Goro in Mortal Kombat 1? Yeah, okay. Just making sure my, my memory wasn't lying to me. But basically, what's supposed to happen is that there's first a vertex shader pass, and then depending on your whatever option you choose, the there's a separate fragment shader pass, I think. That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure out, is how do I make these undisplay? <laughs> right, because in my code here, what I've, so Felipe, uh, what I've done is I've taken a Rust library that loads in Live2D files, then I've wrapped that in my own thing to bind it to Godot. So we can see that we have all of these things. These are just Godot functions that I can call. So in Godot, I'm calling, uh, we have a, not this one, this one, just the regular Rust factory, then this loads in the loader, and it loads in this thing from this file path, etc., etc. Right, we load in all the textures as well from that JSON, JSON file that I generate, which is, where is the JSON file? I've done it before. Here, no, that's the, that's the MOC. I don't know what MOC stands for. JSON, yeah which is just like a huge file in and of itself. And then from there, I generate every single mesh that's drawn on screen, which is, there's 83 meshes right now. I think there should only be 80 meshes currently. So the hard part is one, figuring out how to get these to unrender so that she doesn't have four arms. Like you can see that I'm, I am setting the albedo 
of that mesh based off the opacity from the the data that I'm getting back. <laughs> Jason means Jason or <laughs> Jefferson? 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 <laughs> I've seen it as Jason before. There's always the, the programming meme of like, uh, you guys keep mentioning Jason, but we don't have a Jason on our team. Who is this Jason, and why is he storing? Why is he handling all of our information? <laughs> Let me talk to this Jason. <laughs> you don't don't you have the data of visible parts? I do have data of visible parts. So here's the kicker. Guess what? Look at this. If I so I'm calling this stuff. This stuff doesn't matter. But um, what we can do is we can print out the. Mm, print d dynamic flags as a string. Check this out. Oh, it changed. Look at this. Look at this. They're all visible. Why are they all visible all the time? Oh, sometimes they also update themselves. Maybe I can actually see what they. That's all. They're they not. It says that they're all visible. I don't understand what that means though. Also, sometimes I saw some other things. Yeah, draw order changed. What? Opacity changed? Huh? Also, is that all one shader? They actually are... They actually have... Uh... No, they're not all one shader. So, what happens is I construct a new mesh for every single one. It's not a 3.4 issue, it's just a me issue. Because I'm not sure how to handle this, because what should be happening is I draw into a GL buffer, an open GL buffer, and then this appears. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> I've, I've kind of like worked around it by constructing one in Godot terms, but I feel like the information I'm getting back is also incorrect. Maybe. Or it's possible that it's, um, I'm just drawing too many things, but I need to figure out which things handle which things to draw. Like, the, the complicated part is that th this is not just, like, one image. Even though it looks like they're just kind of, like, wiggling one image around, they're not actually, that's not actually how this works. Every single part is a, just a bunch of, like, numbers, basically. Which is tough. Right, because that, that's how I'm loading them in, is I, I construct the vertices, I construct the mesh from a bunch of vertices, UVs, and indices. And these vertices are just a bunch of points, aka a vector 2. UVs are also just a bunch of points, aka a vector 2. Just coordinates or something else. Well, I think that's not the problem. The problem is I need to figure out how to hide them. <laughs> Because the flags I'm getting back from the application are also saying that everything is visible. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Can you print out all the data f for just one part? Yeah. So check this out. So if I do this, we can just look at the first part, which I believe was the left shoulder. So if I just set a breakpoint here, we can just look at it. Right? So D doesn't exist yet. D is just a, I, I map everything. So everything is given to Godot via like JSON interrupt or a dictionary and then I load it into a Godot object. So I'm not sure how visible this is, uh, but I guess it doesn't really matter, you know? So we have 243 indices. I don't really know what an index is in terms of like mesh drawing. Oh, my avatar has a cool transparent shirt. Yes. <laughs> it's because I'm using a chroma key. And then, like, the, the green that your avatar has is just close enough to that chroma key green. But, yeah. So, like, this, this is all the information for the shoulder. So, the, it has a few vertex positions, which is a pool vector 2 array. It uses the first texture, has opacity of just one, draw order of 690. 
<laughs> nice. Um, and then there's a render render order of 76. I actually don't really understand what the difference between draw order and render order is, but it looks like the Rust implementation uses render order over draw order. And then we have flags, which I have mapped to uh, strings, even though these should be bytes. So this is the binary representation, which I also feel is wrong, but I don't know. And yeah, it also has no masks. You know, mask off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah, I mean this. I mean it looks right, as far as I know. I mean the dynamic flags also change. The opacity also seems to be somewhat correct. I, I the hard part is I just don't understand what the masks are supposed to do. I'm what I'm, I'm assuming is that there, you know, if there is. There there's, must be some sort of data that I'm missing, right? So based off of this implementation, or no, not based off this implementation, based off of this implementation, can you uncode the flag binary part? Yeah, I've already uncoded it. I've already uncoded the, the flags. So that's what you're seeing here, right? So I have uncoded the flag into their respective string representations. I think I've done that on the Rust part, actually or on the Rust side. Did I do that on the Rust side? I forget. Or did I, this is in the loader. This is the wrong thing entirely. Yeah, 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 so here. So we have the constant flags as just bits, as a string, and then this is just using Rust's internal formatter that generates the, the equivalence. So there's the binary, hex, and then there's just formatting flags. Yeah. It's an index the the vertex. No, I actually have vertex positions as well. <laughs> so there's there's so there's I have an I have an indice. So the index actually refers to what does the index refer to? It's the drawable index. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm past that. Which I get as a it's a U. I think it's an unsigned 16-bit integer, so I just cast it as an i32. And I think that's just like its, its position within the data, because I, I believe that these are actually all pointers. So that's OK. And then I have a bunch of indices, which I don't un quite understand what those do. Then I have vertex positions and then vertex UVs. So you, luckily, what you can do in Godot is you know you can generate a mesh at runtime using an array mesh. So array mesh, add surface from arrays. I'm pretty sure that these are all primitive triangles. I haven't tried with anything else, but I'm pretty sure it would just break. So there must be scene state data somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm also kind of thinking that you know looking at this code here on the right. I might be missing something. Like I've I've done the the opacity thing, I guess. Maybe. Maybe I should be doing it here in my my update function. But see like the way that they're doing it, they they're doing it by index. So they run through every single body part. So they do 83 updates per second, which isn't too bad. So they but they grab the opacity of that Part. Like I, I just need to find out like when would I not draw the mask? <laughs> I, I, I still understand because the masks are stored as a drawable, but each drawable may or may not have an associated mask, which is just I don't quite understand what that means. So you can see here that we have uh, we have three masks and then. We have several parts that also use that mask. So part uh, uh, 80, mm, no, part 42, 52, 54, 55, 56, 75, and 76 all use a mask, which I'm assuming is probably the crossed arms. 
So I need to figure out how to how to draw that. So looking at the Rust code, I mean Rust, it's it's basically the same thing as GD scripts. If you're familiar with like JavaScript, it shouldn't be too too far away. Uh, this just anything with an exclamation mark means it's a macro. This macro just creates a new vector. Easy. Uh, so let's see. If it's not in parts, it's not in parts. Maybe it's in the parent. So that's the hard part, is I don't quite understand what I need to grab. So this is the, this is my user model, right? So this is from the Rust binding. And then this pretty much maps one-to-one, -one, essentially. Well, it's a, it's a, it's an abstraction over the base API. So this is the, the nice API user model, which I pretty much have all mapped out, except for this part. But then there's like load parameters, save parameters, swap parameters, don't need all that. I'm calling update from Godot as well, which is how I'm getting the different values from time to time. There is a controller, but I don't really understand how this works. I know that there there is like a built-in eye controller, and then I think you should be able to implement your own controllers after that. Is the SDK open source? So it is free. So check that out. You can download the native SDK. Uh, so it works on pretty much everywhere, right? I mean, there, there's a there's a JavaScript SDK as well, which looks like it's better supported. I'm using the the native one. There's a there's one for Unity as well, but I, you know, of course, I can't use that. And then also a PS4 and Switch SDK, which is hilarious. Yeah, I, I don't I quite don't quite understand why Cocos 2D X has a native SDK for it. You know what? I could probably just look at that. Now I'm thinking about it. Look at the file parser. Well, the file parser is not a problem. I just need to find out, like, where in this do I need it? Yeah, like, the, the examples that were in this repository don't really work, which is unfortunate. You know, it might be in core system, which is, no, it probably isn't, right? Like, th this is the raw C binding. So this is this is what you get from the SDK. These are all the SDK functions. Uh, so you get parameter count, parameter IDs, etc., drawables, and that's pretty much it, right? This like this is the this is the raw binding to the SDK. Then there's update model. Uh, so from after that, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. It's in models? I don't think it's in models, right? Like, when you update the model, yeah. Like, there are... There are things that you can pass in, for sure. Like, you, when you update the model, you pass in, like, a model again. Yeah. So you initialize the model in place, that gives you a CSM model. Well, I don't know what CSM model maps to, but... Uh... <laughs> There must be generic info too. I don't think so. That might, but that might be all on the the C side, like versioning. Yeah, versioning, versioning actually exists on the MOC, which I don't really have access to. Like, there's MOC version. So whenever you generate a live 2D model, that should generate. You that should be done via their application, which is tough. But that, that's the that's the raw binding that I have access to, um, and then there's just a source. So I know I, I know that there's a controller as well that I should be able to hook into. But like, uh, I don't I don't quite understand what some of these mean. <laughs> like some of these are pretty pretty weird, pretty weird. Like what the heck is a simple slab, and it uses a buffer. Ooh, simple slab. Simple wrapper around a vector that returns the index of a newly pushed inserted elements and allows holes to exist. Hit it. So like, I guess that's how it works on the, the C side, but like, that's crazy. Like eye blinking, yeah, I get it. 
Uh, maybe this part. JSON. Oop. Clicked out of something I shouldn't have. Yeah. User data? Parses a user data 3 from a user data 3 JSON reader. I don't think I need that. They have some tests, but I don't need. Reads a pose? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are all for reading that stuff, which, which I do have implemented, by the way. I just don't have any of the expression stuff. But I don't quite understand how to do this part yet, because I do, there's no examples. That's the hard part, is that there's no examples. Um, I guess I, unless I like were to open up Cocos 2D, they don't really have an OpenGL example that I can read. I mean, there is, but I, I'm not able to read it because I don't know what I'm looking at. So if we look at, I guess, Live 2D, GitHub. Yeah, I can look at the, the native samples, right? It's all in Japanese as well, which is, you know, that's cool. Very, very cool. Very usable. So looking at OpenGL stuff, don't really know what I'm looking at, but still don't really know what the <laughs> these are. Like, why are they de why are they defined with L? Does that mean they're supposed to be linked? Ooh, Touch Manager main C plus plus, sure. Yeah, L app delegate header plus plus L app delegate header plus plus. That's the define. L app delegate header. It's all in Japanese as well, which is really cool. Application class. Uh, something or e gal. Something runner. Class <laughs> no instance shingurito. What? <laughs> what? Shinguruton. No. I don't really know what that means. Instance ga. Shang Shi <laughs> Don't know. I like I could go through this and like try to figure out what they're doing. Like these are all just callbacks. Event handlers, yeah. Open GL stuff. Looking really good. Texture manager, app sprites. I don't know, it might be an app sprite now that I'm thinking about it. Go look at this. Mm. Constant Rakta Rak Rakuta Rex Live 2D Cocos 2D demo classes. Alright, we can look at Cocos 2D. Isn't Coco Cocos 2D X is in um Still C++. I was actually looking at the open, I was looking at the open GL one, but uh, these are probably about the same, unfortunately. Like the app delegate, yeah, this looks the same. Like, I, I guess, like, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. So if you look at the source, you know, you'll, ha you'll have a few header files, which probably don't do too much. Yeah. Header, and these are just basically runners. So application get instance. So there's an app delegate, which comes from probably this delegate right here, which does some dependency injection, depending on, you know, what deployment platform you're using. So this doesn't really help me. So there's the Live2D manager, which I probably need. So recreate manager, sure. So we look at Live2D manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's implemented somewhere in C++ land. 
Get instance, release instance. Uh, <laughs> rendering. So when does, where, where, does, where does rendering come from? Where is this? What is this? We could look at how they're doing it, I suppose. Rendering. See, that, that's what makes reading C++ hard. Oh, no. Rendering? So there's the shader. OK, so that's, that's how they're using it. So they have, well, model instance tans instance no container. Nice. Uh, don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, we can look at the uh, the model. Sure. Update draw. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that would be useful. Maybe. Load assets. I don't need to do load assets. Probably. Well, set up model. I probably need. File name. Yeah. Load model. Sure. Taking a buffer. Is load model is load model defined here? <sighs> okay, where's load model defined? Uh, mm, where is load model defined? Load model defined. It's probably defined in LUP model? No, LUP pal, wouldn't it? Load, yeah, load, no. I don't know what PAL stand, what, what, what does P-A-L stand for? Like this is load file as bytes, yeah. Which gets them as the CSM, which I'm assuming is like the cubism thingy. Delta time, I don't think that's true. Hmm. This is the model stuff. So lead asset setup model expression. Ah, oh, okay. So model setting. Do I have model settings? Did I just miss that when I was going through the Rust stuff? It's very possible. So there's expression. Oh no, does don't I have that defined here in cubism model? So we have the JSON stuff. There's the res path. MOC canvas info, which I need for the PPU, at least when I'm running in 2D. Drawable. An update. Okay, maybe I missed that. Because I know that one of these has expressions defined on it. Oh, it's the, the base model, I think. So there's the MOC drawables. No. Where do I get expressions from? So there's canvas info. Parts, part parents. This part is the root. Sure, that's like a manually defining a skeleton. Drawable at. None of these are expressions. Are expressions from controller? Ooh. So this is a expression controller. Then there's just controller defines here question mark where do these come from <laughs> eh? so this in cubism rs so i'm i'm do i need to load this from somewhere model setting where is model setting coming from Ooh, model setting Is this multiple is this multiple inheritance? Might be included in the runtime? It might be. This this almost looks like multiple inheritance. Which looks very confusing. Or is this just defines here? So I'm looking at which file am I looking at? L app model. Where's model settings? Is this defined in the header? 
Hmm. It might be actually. No, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Model setting. Ching. Bao. What? <laughs> Is that not how you pronounce it in Chinese? That that doesn't make any sense to me, like in context with context though. Ching yeah, Ching Bao. What? <laughs> also, I'm impressed I was able to read that. <laughs> He's so good. He's starting to be able to just recognize random characters. Uh look at that. Okay, sure. Ching Ching Bao, which is isn't Ching? Please. No? Oh, this is Ru Qing. The Ru, okay. Ru Qing, the Qing. And then Bao is Bao. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Bao is Bao. Oh, Hui Bao. Or Hui Bao, the Bao. Report. The word sounds the same to me. Well, that's because it's tonal, so it's Qing. Qing, not Qing. So there's there's four tones plus the the one situational tone for inflection. <laughs> so it's it's tough. It's a tough language if you are an English speaker. If you if you only speak like Western languages, yeah, it's a tough one. But I, the 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 grammar and syntax is very simple though, which is nice. Because it's it's the grammar is really easy, right? So you always just you just need to remember to like put the time at the the start of the sentence, um, and then after that you can just run up, run on sentences are allowed, I suppose. <laughs> Verbs you can you can you can interject you, you can conjugate a verb, and that's pretty much it. So that, that's how you do like a verb for amount of time. So you do like, uh, you know, da, bangge xiao shi de lan qiu. So da da lan qiu is play basketball, but da bangge xiao shi de lan qiu is play for half an hour basketball. <laughs> I like Chinese songs, so they're different. I can't understand any Chinese song. <laughs> Chinese songs because like there's no there's no tones. In a Chinese song, it, it, you just have to kind of like guess at what they're saying. So I don't know enough to be able to do that. Where did these get set? That's what I'm... Oh, this is a pointer! It's a pointer! <sighs> okay. Yeah, but I, I think that's, that's the same for a lot of like, even when I talk to like... Native speakers. Like people who grew up in China, it's like if they don't know what the song is about, <laughs> some like the, for some songs it's just impossible to know what they're talking about. Like you need to have context, otherwise it's not going to make any sense, which is like hilarious but also kind of sad. All right, so where where is this constructed? So, L app model, in its constructor, oh it has its. It's a null pointer. <laughs> it's a null pointer. That's fantastic. I love it. Fantastic. Setup model from setting. Uh. Model, app manager, pow. Model? <laughs> Does this use model at all? I just need to look through. Does the sprite use the model? No. This is just the sprite that binds to Cocos 2D. Does this use the model? This does use the model. Okay. So we can look for. Usages of model. 
so it redefines LF model. That's good. No, I'm in model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't really know what I'm looking for then. Is it in view? Does this use the model? It does use the model. Okay, hold on. I love model. Hold on. When do we create the model? It creates the view matrix, but that's okay. Don't need that, because that's all kind of like OpenGL stuff. Uh, on exit, draw, draw node, on draw. Uh, this doesn't really help me. What do you got? iOS CMake. For some reason, I can't load from a... from this stuff anymore. Is that MM though? Hold on. We can figure this out. I can't open links from OBS anymore. But he's done it. Line 124. Data no yomi something. Data reader. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Load assets. Model setting. Well, where does model setting come from? That's where I'm confused about. Where, where does model setting come from? Do I have a model setting? Model. This is user model. I just have controllers. Get expression name. Model setting, get expression file name. Yeah, I, I, I have all the expressions listed in JSON, right? Searching in the repo. Appreciate it. Like I, I do have the, the expression data. Does that mean I'm supposed to load in the data? As like a... Do I need to read in the data? Is that what they're asking me to do? Please don't, please don't be asking me to do that. That would be horrible. <laughs> so there's expression in controller. Oh no, I see. Oh! Oh! I see. I see. Why don't their, their examples don't do that? Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's okay. Don't, don't get tilted. <laughs> don't get tilted. This is tough. This is tough. That's really tough. Okay, so all, they, all this Rust library is done is create the, the binding. And then like a nice wrapper around it, but I still need to do the the parsing myself. Uh, okay, we can do it. Stay stay censored. Keep censored. Whew. Okay. That's tough though. That's super tough. Because then there's a... Alright, like this one actually looks pretty nice. Now looking at it, like, that makes sense. So we, we get the ex expression name. They're using auto. How gross. So you know now? Yeah, I mean that makes sense, I suppose. Like when they're loading in the assets, yeah. That was very helpful, you know. Have a, have a plus two. Plus two, plus two to bum D. Yeah, okay, so... This is, like, this is, this is pretty much the flow that I'm doing right now, right? So I'm doing, I load in the JSON, yeah, which is what they're doing here. They load in the JSON, so model no something. This looks like pan, <laughs> pan thing, data. The usual, is this, does this mean usual data? Hold on. <laughs> Please be usual data. Sure, oh sure. 
Okay, sure. So that that's not ban. Oh, that's not even like traditional Chinese. This is oh no, that's not simplified. This is traditional. Oh, that's in traditional. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. I got I got I got rused. <laughs> I saw this square. Whenever I see this square, I always get a uh, super mind flooded in characters. But the but the square in traditional gets gets mapped to uh, this weird line on the side. But Japanese always uses ancient Chinese, which is weird. So data ru no setup data. Wait, maduru no setup <laughs> setup data JSON. File from the file yomi something read okay cool which line <laughs> all right so check it out so this one turns into this one in traditional because i i can only read traditional chinese or no i can only read simplified chinese so the 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 the, the radical on the left turns into the, just this line but see the the square in every single radical always makes me think of oh, it's the square. But no, it's it's this sequence of characters gets turned into just this line with the with the dot on the top. But the square by itself is like a separate radical altogether, which makes it tough. <laughs> Cause the way that I read Chinese is just like just based off of like the <laughs> big shapes. Look look for the look for the four Look for three big shapes and then make a guess as to what, as to what it means. <laughs> you simplified the modern one? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one thing that people get confused a lot, is that like, you don't read Mandarin Chinese. You read either simplified or traditional. Simplified is the, is the, the one that the CCP uses. It's the one that the People's Republic of China uses. Everywhere else uses traditional Chinese. So simplified is a lot easier to read and to write. But it also means that it's also it's harder to figure out what the character means out of context. Cause like if you if you know if you have the context for a character, then you can kind of like guess as to what it means. <laughs> So like for for a character like um, actually what is what is this one? Yi, Yu is Yi. Oh, this one doesn't even exist in like modern Chinese, which is hilarious. Oh no, yeah, this one th this character doesn't even exist in modern Chinese. But the this radical here, I I don't know what the L shape means. But this the the top one is like a person entering something, and then if you reverse it, it's just person which is funny, but like the the upside down V character generally means Ru, Ru, so Ru Kou, which is a uh, person, hold on, I know, I know how to write this in <laughs> English, enterance, yeah, Ru, Ru Kou, which is a person entering a door, which is an entrance, aha, look at that. He's done it. <laughs> and so, oh, I also spelled entrance wrong. Drew <laughs> call, where this is person entering. Square is technically mouth call, pronounced kuchi <laughs> in Japanese. Uh, so person entering is, a, is an entrance. Wow. And so if you, if you know what those mean, then you can kind of like guess as to what the other things mean. I don't know what this means in Japanese, though. But anyways, let's get started. So we'll need to import expression. Is this just available here? What is this? Man. Yeah, I, I think learning what the radicals mean in Chinese is pretty close to... I guess just like learning what's, I guess the Latin roots of words mean in English. 
I think that's a, that's a pretty close approximation of the same thing. Am I not allowed to do this? Eh? Isn't this, this should be re-exported. Is this not? Source, lib, eh? Oh, it doesn't. Wait, this isn't even in, oh, this is in cubism core. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Cubism source. What, what do you export? You should have, oh, it's, it's in, okay, expression. But yeah, learning what the Chinese radicals mean is somewhat equivalent to learning Latin roots of words in English, but I guess not everyone learns English as well. <laughs> I think that's okay. So there's your expression, and then here. From that JSON, we can get the model, and then we need to read in every single expression. Oh, and then I need to read in the poses and the physics. Okay, so I was actually missing a lot. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So let expression equal, uh, Expression from expression three JSON. All right, this might crash. That's okay though. Uh, and this needs to be a reference. Reference and then model three path, which is JSON. Uh, JSON. JSON. All right, useless. File references expression. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Let mutable expressions, is there a separate, yeah. So they're actually, it's a big, uh, it's just a huge file of like different expressions, so like there's, eight expressions for just the Haru file, and then there's just a bunch of other files. So I'm reading in, what am I reading in? I need to check in the Godot land. What, what, what do I read in, in Godot? I read in the model three JSON from Godot. And then that model three JSON gives me information on every single other file, okay. Yeah, so th this, this is like, you know, if, if I made like a, a file save format, this is how I would do it. <laughs> so it's it's not something that is completely outside my wheelhouse. This is this is how I would handle it, I suppose. <laughs> For I in JSON file references dot Model three, file references, that's public. So file references, file references, you are down here. Expressions, wait a minute. Oh, maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe this does it all for me. Is that how this does it? Where does this come from? No, okay. So it's just the name of the file and then the, the path buffer to the file. <sighs> okay. Okay. He can, he, we can do this. Uh, expressions, Dota 2, Rust code that seems to make sense. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's because this is my wrapper around the, the more intricate other Rust code. Look at this. What the heck? Because this, my my code wraps uh, more Rust code that wraps a C library. I think a lot of beginners are trying Rust. Well, check it out. This is what I've done with my Rust code. Look at that. He's done it. I've loaded in just a like this is a this is basically OpenGL data. Uh, kind of forced to work in Godot. So I've constructed a mesh from that data. He hacked the way it, yeah, basically I hacked it, yeah. 
four rooms like in Street Fighter. Well, the problem is I don't have a, I didn't load in enough data to actually hide all the arms. So there's only supposed to be one one arm. Or one one pair of arms, not just one arm. That would be pretty weird. Uh, I think I need the path buffers, but are these... Is the file and name different? I don't think they are. <laughs> Just got auth figured out on my consulting project. Be able to finally hand it off, oh baby. Congratulations. You have defeated a great project. I have my final, fi my final handoff for my project in about a week on Friday. That should, that should be fun, and I'll be switching over to a new thing, finally. Oh, this is file. Wait, expressions, iter. I think that should be okay. So these are, yeah. Two or three months to get rid of it after getting a real job. Nice. Congratulations on getting a new, a real job, by the way. Authentication is generally one of the harder parts of most uh, most projects, in my experience. I've never had to work with it, but <laughs> the the training I've had to go through for authentication was intense. So for I in this stuff, so there should be some sort of path buffer, I think. Ooh. It's totally it's not too bad. Well, are you using something like auth O or not auth O, auth zero? I know that that stuff should just work out of the box, I think. Oh, so hackers are trying to break it in weird ways all the time. Oh, did you roll your own authentication system? <laughs> oh no. Instead of just saying to the clients, like, oh, this is now your new auth system. Got to pay them some upkeep. Rolling my own for fun. Sounds tough. <laughs> Sounds tough. Mm. All right, model. And then this is I. Path. Was that path or was it I file? I use Sea Lion at work, so this is a bit tough. <laughs> Usually I don't need to do this manually. Oh, you know what? If we're just doing this, check it out, we can do... I finally figured out, by the way, how Rust works. Like, because I'm, I'm not like a programmer, I suppose. I'm just someone who knows how to program. So no one told me that Rust, if you want Rust to just work, the easiest way to understand it is that anything that's mutable consumes the value, basically, until it goes out of scope. That's, oh, why didn't you say so? <laughs> that makes so much more sense. If it's a mutable value, you're not allowed to touch it again. Oh. That's so much easier. And so now I feel pretty good about writing Rust code. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. I usually like Auth0. Yeah, doing your stuff makes me realize why those companies exist. Mm. There's a lot of shit on Twitch that aren't even trying to write code. They usually screw up my Rust experience. Mm. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's hard to be productive and then also, you know, work on code at the same time. So I, I guess I understand the sentiment. So let's see if this will build. This will probably build. Oh, never mind. Cannot infer a type parameter. Oh, because I'm not pushing it. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Expressions. Push. So, all right. No. Okay. What is your problem? Which does not implement the copy traits. I guess we can just clone it. It doesn't matter. Most things implement clone. Yeah. 
Iterators are lazy and do nothing unless consumed. I guess we can do it like this. Instead of just pushing to that external one, we can just collect it inside of uh, an expressions thingy. Oh, that's not how you do it. Let expressions equal this thing, and then we'll just collect afterwards. So after the map method, it'll get removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes map confusing on something that's mutable. Does it? Type annotations needed. All right, well, this needs to be a vector of the expression, I think. That's probably it. Oh, am I not allowed to collect? Milky Dev banned me, so I have no idea why. I can guess I was not really privy to the reason. Yeah, I mean, it's their, pl their platform, I suppose, you know? Value of type. Oh, these are results. Oh, okay. So. Unable to load expression file. That's fine. Send it. Oh, that seems okay. Open on band request. Let's see. That's okay. And then we can expose this somewhere. Or at the very least, I can just copy it over and then just print it out. Cannot create, oh right, because it's being used, so we need to close this. Just copy it over. Oh, actually, and then I need to print it out using Godot, print excited. Can't I format it like this? So we hit it with like a format, excited. And I'll just let you figure out how to print it. Um, expressions. Yeah, that's probably fine. I don't know. I'm a mod a significant number of channels. How fancy. Format argument must be a string literal. That's fair enough. I can just two string it. I don't think I can do that. I might be able to do that, but it's inside a macro though, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, I guess we can always just hit it with a debug and just see what it gives me. Just so I can look at it. Because I don't know what's inside of this or what kind of objects. I just want to make sure that it's there and that it's able to load properly because I'm not sure if the paths are absolute or relative paths. I'm assuming they're relative paths, but I'm not sure how they figure out where the rest of the files are. So we can we can run it. Non-existent function, canvas info and base nil, eh? Okay, so we panicked, that's good. He is a friend. Might be one other person. Which IDE is this? Is this Unity? No, this is Godot. I do I do most things in Godot because uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's easy to bind just random things to it. System cannot find the path specified. Okay. So that's good. Godot. Godot dot dot dot. What do you mean Godot dot dot dot? You know, I'd like to see you be, use uh, Rust in Unity, I suppose. Uh, you could use Rust in Unity if you were to write, write a, a wrapper function around, or not a wrapper function, but a, like just a, a C++ wrapper around that. And then you would need to wrap that C++ wrapper with C Sharp in order to use it in Unity. Good to, huh? The licensing seems more favorable. Yeah, just a little bit, you know. Closed source versus MIT licensed. <laughs> it's a little bit. It's a little bit more favorable. I don't know. Hard to say. Hmm. So where did I go wrong? 
What is what is the file path? That's that's what I'm curious about, is what the file path is. I guess I could just hit it with a one of these. And I should be able to get a reference to it as well. I don't I don't know what this file path is. I suppose I could just like look at it and then see. <laughs> I think I should also be able to build it from the, the previous res path as well. Nope. Yeah. One of the kind of unfortunate things, or fortunate, depending on how you see it, is that Godot does the JavaScript thing and just kind of fail gracefully. An argument in Juicebox Hero. Reason. Who's Juicebox Hero? And also, this is a relative path. So that's tough. Uh, I wonder if I can get the... Hmm. How do I get the, the current path for this? So this is like the resource path. I could change the API. So there's like the resource path and the file name. file name. These both have to be strings. And then I can do like a path buffer from like the path. And the JSON path is equal to resource path join file name Clone. I think that should be fine. Oh, that's a reference to it. That's not mutable, right? Okay. <laughs> Never seen a Twitch product manager, the business analyst on my work. I don't know. Good they are. Do you work for Twitch, by the way? Dota 2 Attitude? Is that why you're talking about them like that? Global path? Yeah, that's what I'm using in Godot is global path, by the way. As I'm globalizing the path. But I think I actually need to switch them up. So I need to globalize the resource path, but then keep the relative path, like the file name separates. So that I can then use the same globalized path inside of the Rust code. Otherwise, I don't think Rust knows where it's loading things from. Position is ridiculously important. Yeah, product manager. Yeah. So the product manager is like the, you know, the the person who has the the final say on what what to do, which means that they're also responsible for the product if it does well or does poorly. No no Twitch employees have gears by their name. Uh, I want to learn C. C is C is okay. I'm not. Not a huge fan. I, I think the, the biggest thing I have against like C and C++ is that their their build tooling is just garbage. Absolutely hate it. Hmm. So what is from Model Three JSON? Ooh. Hold on. So I think we can do we can do this. I, I need to comment these out. We're gonna get some errors. Let JSON equal model three from reader. So we'll do the same things here. Hold on. Oh, hello, Paluka zero zero, or as they say in some parts of the world, Paluka not not. Newt newt. I have a Minix book, which has C in it. Minix is what Linux started out as. Um, is that true? I think, yeah, I think that is true. Yeah, Linux is based on Minix. I was gonna say that's it's based off of Mach, but that's not true. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's OS X, it's based off Mach OS. What I am working on, by the way, uh, is a live 2D viewer, or live 2D binding at the very least for this application, look at this, wow. We can also change to something a bit more complicated like this, wow. 
So this is VRM, which is not the most popular way of doing this kind of stuff in, uh, you know, the, the V tubing, whatever. Oh, thank you for the follow, by the way, Paluka. Didn't notice, I, I'm, I'm just too mind flooded by the fact that there's no simple implementation of this. Every single implementation that I can find for implementing live 2D is just ultra complicated, which I don't understand. It's like Vignette, which is the closest one that to what I could be using. Like they use shaders to do some sort of, you know, magic. But I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I don't think I need that quite yet, but it's also like completely inscrutable because of that. Unix Minute landing about their OS system because Alliant realized it might be intellectual property. Yeah, Minix is like the, the learning version of it or learning version of something, I forget. Create a Minix, which mirrored Unix but slightly more organized. Maybe someone built an all the remainder of the stuff needs to make it an OS was and Linux was born. I think that's true. I've read the history before. That doesn't quite match up with what I remember, but I also don't really have a retort, so. Let's see. Path. So this comes from I think this is from model. So let's see. Um, or this is from the JSON thing. So, bum bum bum. Maybe not. From model three. I think, hmm. User model from model three. It's a mess who, who claims actual ownership of Linux. Possibly. I mean, I don't know. Linus was the first one who uh, did all of the the groundbreaking work. So I don't know. It's, <laughs> more or less, it's him, right? Unless you want to go back, like, oh, you know, doesn't Minix technically work off of a, a computer that has transistors? Therefore, you would have to attribute part of its creation to whoever invented the transistor. It's, uh, well, you know, it's probably the people at the that one IBM laboratory. No, it's not IBM. Well, which, 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 was it Healer Packard? No. Whoever created, it's not. It was one of them. Whoever made the, the, IBM was the one who was able to capitalize off of the, the first, like, general purpose chip. So it's, it's, it's someone. General, yeah, personal computer, yeah, sure. But then, yeah, I guess you could also keep going back. It's like, oh, but then you would have to attribute to, like, the, the computer stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I, who was the first person who wrote like a, a programming language? Like who wrote C? As I, Linux wouldn't exist because of the person who made C. So, you know, you gotta draw the line somewhere. And that's where I draw the line. It's like, eh. OS, it's close enough. <laughs> it's close enough. Model three. Or JSON reader. Is this not it? Oh, this is user model. User model. I don't want to read from a JSON three if I can. Hmm. Sued Microsoft for creating their personal computer. Xerox made a PC, and then Xerox stole it from. <laughs> yeah. Or what did they build on top of? <laughs> yeah. No, I probably. This is really expensive. Yeah. Well, of course it's always built off of someone else's work, right? So like, I think if we're talking about like personal computers that weren't like vacuum tubes, it would be like the, the work of whoever created transistors. Hmm. So this is the base path and then the model. What's the base path? Base path, join, MOC path. Oh, so that's just the, the base path. I guess that's okay. So this is the res path once again. 
So res path, and then the model through. Yeah, JSON. Did that need to be a reference? It did need to be a reference. All right, so there's your model three. And then, what's your problem? Mismatch types. Oh, and then we need to unwrap, of course. They built it based on the fact that memory would eventually be cost effective enough in 10 years that would be feasible. Are right about that? Yeah. I'm a 10 years start on PC industry and not being a major player. So, so it goes. So it goes. It's always kind of hard to, to predict what will happen in the future. It's hard enough to predict what will happen like tomorrow, right? <laughs> All right, so this needs to be, so model and then path. This needs to be like the file. This needs, okay, so x.file. So this is res path join x file. Can I, am I allowed to just take a reference to it? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to predict where the, the industry will go. All right, I, I don't think anyone really could have predicted like the rise of, you know, VTubers being like a big thing, but I guess they are. You know, I think people actually feel, can actually feel more comfortable watching someone who isn't like a real person as opposed to, you know, a real person. <laughs> like, did you know, like looking at the, like, just like the YouTube statistics, like I was surprised nine out of the top 10 most like donated streamers on YouTube are, are VTubers. That's crazy. Nine out of the 10. And then out of the top 100, I, I looked this up before, I can find it again. It, I, I, sent, I sent an email to my dad because my dad didn't believe me, so I'm going to look it up. <laughs> I'm also not going to show my email when I on Twitch. But, uh, yeah, it's like 54 out of the top 100 most donated streamers on YouTube are, uh, are VTubers, which is crazy. All right, look at, look at this. Look at that. That's wild. So these are all hollow live and then like top 10. <laughs> and it's not it's not even like barely top 10, but like number 10 is just like a Portuguese man. Probably Brazilian. I'd be surprised if it was actually from Portugal. And then and then it's just more uh more VTubers. That's wild, dude. So I th I think if you could have predicted that that would happen even in like the, like back in like 2017, you could be on top of the world right now. So predicting 10 years out, that's hard. Predicting even like four years out, that's hard. Actually, yeah, four years out roughly, because it just turned 2022. I keep forgetting. I think I have signed some things as 2021 still. Yeah, super chat, yeah, super chat donation. It's like the same thing. I don't worry too much about the uh, the specifics of what they're called. All right. All right. So copy this. Hopefully, I'm able to run the test thing again, but maybe not. Nope. Just hard crash. That's good. What was the error this time? Incorrect number of parameters required to, but got one at source loader 24. 24. Oh, right, right, right. I need to change this on my side now. So this needs to be globalized path. Globalized path. Just the res path now. And then I pass in this. So we can run it again. I'll have to bed anyhow later. Take it easy. Thanks for hanging out. Dota 2. Attitude. Let's see. Uh, okay. We can figure this out. Panicked, unable to open file, permission denied, access is denied. 
All right, that's good. <laughs> um, unable to open file. I need to have like a better error message. <laughs> where did the where did this error out? Thirty nine. Okay. Okay. So it's it's this one here. Res path. Oh, it's res path. Oh, JSON path. Right. I knew that. JSON path. Sorry. 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 Cargo build. All right. Huh. I think this this might be one of the first implementations that I can see that is not based off of the reference implementation. <laughs> or I guess not hard based off of a ref reference implementation, because I think the C-sharp implementation is just based off of the Unity one, which makes sense, right? But it's kind of cheating in my world as well. Because I can't base anything off the Unity one. All right, cool, we did it, hooray. So now we have access to expressions, kind of. And that means I also need to go through every single other thing. Uh, let's see, it should have printed out all the expressions. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I think. <laughs> fade in, fade out. I don't, I actually don't really know what that means, but I guess we need the, the motion then. So we, we load the expression, yeah. Then we need to do... What? <laughs> Cubism motion delete. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. Wait, no. Is expression the same thing as motion? Ooh. Hold on, because, I ask this because there's also just motion files as well. Yeah, motion, like in English, is a type of expression, but, but, there are just motion files as well. <laughs> actually, no, motion, uh, actually, I don't know, where is this used? Hmm. Or is ex motion is an expression data type? I'm not sure. What does expression use? So expression ha just has fade in, fade out, then parameters. And we can load it in. Apply an expression to a model, sure. Hmm. But what, what, when does the motion come into effect? So. What is the motion model three? This is in motion. Okay. <laughs> Not useful. Yeah, so the, yeah, there are expressions and then motions. I guess motion is something that can just happen. Redeemed a hydrate. Oh, thank you very much for redeeming a hydrate, Bumdi. Much appreciated. Remember to drink water. We're getting there. I'm still trying to figure out like what things I need to do. Uh. Okay. Pretty much out of water at this point. All right, let's keep going. Press the file. What, which file am I pressing? Just looking at the JSON? I don't really wanna look at the JSON, but I can. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh. It's a bunch of numbers with segments, yeah? Parameter, spelled correctly. Yeah, I don't know. When, when are these loaded in? So there's poses, physics, user data, then layout. Model, oh, layouts. Hold on. Actually, I don't have anything for that. <laughs> It's like Godot's anim data? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I don't know. Do you want to try out like a different model? 
Let's try a different model. So this would be... It's not Haru. Well, I need to change it in several places, so... Haru, and then... I don't know. Why is this one called Rice? <laughs> rice. Ooh. We broke, which means it doesn't work for everything. System cannot find... Did I change something I shouldn't have? 39. No, it should be fine. Or is it called like lowercase rice? And I'm gonna be mad. No? It should be okay. Ten arms, four legs? Possibly. Possibly. All of this all the all the samples I'm using should be on the same repository that you're looking at as well. By the way. Also, these aren't hard coded, are they? I didn't I accidentally hard code something in the the rust side. If I change this stuff back, Haru, Haru. Okay. Why am I why doesn't this work when I change it to another model? Like I should be able to look at like it, it was Haru and then yeah, they're all just called the same thing. So Rice should also just work cuz Rice has a model 3 JSON. Right? It's Rice Rice, give that a save. Then it fails, because it's not able to find the the path specified. Did I... What are the other ones? We can try the other ones as well. So there's Mark. <laughs> Mark, it's a very, very boring name. Nice Bible name. Huh, interesting. Does this accidentally, like, exist somewhere where it shouldn't? Oh wait, I know. I know why. I know why. I'm dumb. Let me find it. It's because I... I put the samples here. <laughs> That's why it's not working. It's not actually reading from uh, that third-party repository. It's actually reading from... This repository, or I'm actually I'm looking at this repository. So I just need to go to samples, resources, and then grab all of these except for the other one, and then live 2D test project samples. Slap all of these into here, and then this should work. I should actually exclude these assets. Now I'm thinking about it. Hold on, give me one sec. So we'll hit it with a. Dot GD ignore so Godot will not try to import any of these assets. GD ignore. Right, so let's delete all of these just in case Godot was accidentally running import on them. Don't want that to happen. Alright, so these are the samples. We'll go. Grab all of these, drop these into the sample directory. Then this should work. Oh, geez. <laughs> Why does he have a butt? <laughs> he has a butt on his head. That doesn't look right. Bring me back to... Bring me back to Haru. Alright, Haru is slightly more correct. GD ignore. Yeah, so what GD ignore does is a... Allows you to specify that Godot should not try to import anything in a certain folder. So it's it's really nice when you're working with uh, Rust code or just pretty much any external code inside of the same folder. Yeah. Otherwise, like you know, what Rust does, it generates a lot of intermediate intermediate files, and then Godot will need to scan through every single one of those every time they change. So it's it's nice for it's it's nice for working with test data. Fiori. Let's look at Mark. <laughs> Did I already look at Mark or was Mark this one? I forget. Oh yeah, Mark is the one with the butt on his head. Let's look at Rice. Is there a lot of work to do that? Nice. Alright. Cool. Like this one looks. Oh, never mind. Hold on. 
I was gonna say this one looks pretty correct, but uh, she's missing an arm. <laughs> uh, and also looks like really far away for some reason. Hiyori? Was it Hiyori? Hiyori, okay. Oh no, get this off my screen. <laughs> uh, don't like that. We'll probably just continue to use Haru. Oh baby. We've got a husbando. I'm reading and editing S SVG files, but Engine is importing it. Yeah, well usually if you are doing things in the engine, like if you're doing things like uh, like you're dragging it into a scene manually like this, you would want to import it. But if you are, if you're doing it at runtime, then you would not want to import it. Yeah, that's that's basically it. No import to all. Yeah, that sounds painful. <laughs> no, that the dot gd ignore. It's not. It's not something that's. I think you have to dig to find the the relevant documentation, but yeah, you have to dig for the documentation, but it's there. Anyways, this is neat. We have two Shivas, or I guess two, uh, yeah, two. Is that Shiva? Kali's two Kali's, Kali's. People with more than one pair of arms. All right, I think that's fine. I'm not sure what to do with the expressions though. Cause I, I have both expressions and motions, but this one, we only need to load in poses, say parameters. Oh, this is the motion group. All right, preload motion group. Oh, okay. That's tough. All right, so I, I see what I need to do. So I need to load in like everything, That's pretty much. All right, let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do it. I guess. I'm scared. Uh, this is this seems okay though, and then I'll just need to like send all of this to Godot. You know what? I'm going to get it. Refill my drinks, I'll be right back. BRB. Hello, hello. I'm back. All right, let's continue to just load in everything. It's not hard to do. Uh, so pose file, how many pose files are there? So looking at this, Haru has just one pose file, so that's not bad. So let pose equal, oh, I need to grab pose, I suppose. <laughs> Um, I'm not using all of these, right? Like I'm not, oh, I'm not using like most of these. These are like the JSON values, but I really only need to have, yeah, I, I need like almost none of these. I didn't realize. Pose, pose. I think that's a valid one. No, could not find pose in cubism. Really, really. So that's in JSON. What? Oh no. <laughs> so uh, pose is stored in JSON, I suppose. And then I'll just need to read that. What's the difference between this expression and 
the other expression then. So this is expression source. I need expression JSON. What's the difference? So this is like the... This is expression three. And then this is just regular expression. Oh, and then it reads in the expression three. Oh, and then it has all of the same. Okay, so yeah, the data is all the same in expression. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. But this motion comes from That's tough, man. Why why isn't why doesn't this one have uh Why doesn't this one have the same stuff defined on it? Like is this just um Oh, this is pose by the way. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh pose. Pose, pose, pose. No, there is no pose. What is this used for then? Ooh. So I can read in a pose three. Ooh. What is this used for? Yeah. What is, maybe it's not even, maybe they didn't implement it yet. I don't know. This doesn't look right. Is this used anywhere? I'm, I'm confused. So expression, then this is motion. I don't need to look at motion. Pose might be the states. Possibly. Like, Pose doesn't have anything else. Wait. What? <laughs> what? Um, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Who is a more complicated one? I think this one was the... Nope. I don't really know what this means, but okay. I guess we can just load it in anyways, just because. So we'll need to load in. Mm -hmm. No pose. But this is the next one I do need to load in. So this is pose three, sure. But that, no, pose three should just be in the... G Pose 3 is not necessarily in the JSON. But we also don't need to load it in immediately either. But... This is tough. You know, the IKs and things, it sounds related to that. You know what? That, that possibly makes sense. I don't think there's any IK... Uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. I should know. But I don't. Like, I've never worked with any live 2D application. I just know what it looks like, because it's the most popular one. So I suppose, I, I, I guess that's, that's fair. All right, so this JSON value. Oh, so I do just have JSON values. Interesting. Uh, so model three, what do you have? For pose. So yeah, pose is just a path buffer, so that's not super useful for me. And this live capture still might be empty, don't know really. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, you know what? That makes sense. If these are meant for live capture, well, no, because lots of games also use live 2D as well. So I, I well, I say lots of games, but like it's mostly like visual novels and uh gacha games that use live 2d but still did you know like if, if you want to add if you play any gacha games by the way <laughs> i don't know if you do or if you're familiar with the idea of it but live 2d things they can't just add free live 2d models because it costs money for every single one that they uh according to the license anyways it costs money for each live 2d thing that you add to your game 
I didn't realize that. Anyways. I think cubism model. Yeah, we can... We can... Let's see. JSON. You know what? We'll rename this to JSON3 so I don't get confused. So this needs to be JSON3, JSON3. And this is JSON3. I, I guess we'll load in the, the pose 3 as well. So this is pose 3, pose 4. I only know about live 2D. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Oh, does this not exist? No pose 3 in JSON model. Eh? What do you mean? Source JSON. Uh. Pose 3. Eh? JSON. Is this not exposed? It's under pose. So it needs to, this needs to be like pose three. Who made this? Wait. Oh, it's not in JSON model. It's in. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Don't get salty. I can feel. I can feel it. I'm starting to get salty. <laughs> uh. Pose. Pose three. Okay, he's done it. Make good animations, like pre-render things. Yeah, there's there's like a lot of other uh, libraries out there nowadays, though. Like I know that there is. You might be familiar with Spline. Not not this one. What is it called? Spline animation. I think it's I think it's called Spline or oh, Spine Spine two D animation for games. And then there's also like Dragon Bones. Which I've been recommended to use as well, but it's kind of a Chinese thing. Yeah, <laughs> as you can see, uh, this is Chinese because there's no kanji, or there's no there's no hiragana or katakana. Yeah, use those and try to use it with Godot. Yeah, I know that there is a Dragon Bones implementation for Godot. I've been. But I don't know. I don't know anyone who actually uses those things. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of weird. So from reader. So this needs to be file. Open. All right. So I need the pose path. So let's pose. Do I only use JSON path here? So I can use, I can do this, right? To make it just really clean. Ooh. One of these. Yeah, okay, hold on. We're doing it. So res path. Join. Uh at the end the libraries were not up to date and Godot already adds some good stuff, so good native good no native was the way to go. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That's what I like about Godot, though, is that it is open. So if you just want a feature, you are just kind of free to implement it yourself, I suppose. I'm into that. Uh, let's see. So this is JSON3, file, references. Oh, you know what? I think I, I this is one of the ones I need to construct outside of this. I can't just do it. Right, so let's or I, if let some uh path or pose path equals JSON three File references pose is that what it's called? Played uh, Godot is the SVG rasterizer. Yeah, I think I've I've looked into that before a while back, but they were I think wasn't the the, the thing about SVGs was that they 
And we're just recommending people to just export the SVG entirely. Something like that. Instead of like trying to render the SVG j directly. So this is an option, yeah. Option path buffer. I'm using external tool, so nano SVG or something like that. All right. Well, you could just use your own custom build of Godot if you are interested. Sounds painful, but you could totally do it. So let pose three equal none, and then we'll do this. I don't know why it's optional. That's what. <laughs> that's why I'm a little confused. Mm. Hmm. Has built-in anti-aliasing. No way to turn it off. That's garbage. Well, I, I mean, that's where the you know rolling your own custom build comes into play, right? Is that if you just have your own custom build, you can write a little bit of C++ to turn it off. And it's like, yeah, it should come with the engine, but at the same time, it's like, it's not a commercial engine, right? It just is provided. Right, it's free, free and open source. If you don't like how something is done, you can just fix it yourself, I suppose. To load pose. What is this? Expected... Oh, okay, hold on. I think we can just do, like, okay. <laughs> on the result to turn it into an option. The trait bound is not implemented for... Ooh. Oh, file open, and then I need to expect it. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Expect... Unable to open file. <clears throat> you have to dig into nano SVG. I'm not complaining. Yeah. So it goes. Cannot find. Alright, pose path. I'm gonna dig into C. I'll mess things up for sure. Well, I think it's not as scary as you think it is. Right? As long as you're only making really localized changes, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Like, I think the, the changes that I was making are probably a, a bit more scary. Because I, I just kind of, like, on exports, this application... Uh, on export only, it's just kind of loads in the entirety of uh, the GLTF module. had a lot of potential to break things apparently, but I didn't know. Apparently it worked, not my problem. There's no field called JSON3. All right. JSON, JSON3. You can do that, right? Yeah. Pose3. Value assigned to pose3 cannot assign twice to immutable variable. Let mutable pose three. Yeah. The only hard part about modifying the Godot engine is that you need to have like all the build tools installed, which is tough. So if you're not using just straight, you know, GD scripts and all that, like you're doing, you need like a web build that also uses C sharp, then you're in for a world of pain. <laughs> But if you're just using, you know, deploying for desktop or for... I actually don't know about mobile, since I remember you doing something for mobile, right? That's a bit tough as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, templates. Like, I, I compile my own templates for sure. But the... Even, like, doing, like, custom editor builds. If you're doing for something that isn't just regular desktop, I guess it can get pretty difficult. 
can get pretty difficult past that. Uh, all right, so that's pose. Now we need physics. What was it called? Ooh. Physics. Uh, physics is also just uh, an optional path buffer. So let's do let. So physics three. Let me see if I can find this. So physics. Yeah, physics three. So it needs to implement or import this. So that should come from JSON physics, physics three, I think. Oh no, and then there's all kinds of things I need to deserialize from that. No. Have you used Love2D? I have used Love2D. Love2D recently had a, a new release, didn't they? Yeah, Love2D was the first game library or first game development thing ever I used, yeah. It was pretty neat. Then kind of realized that I much prefer having like a graphical interface to do a lot of stuff. Like the, you know, a lot of this kind of like low level loading stuff, I don't mind, but when I'm designing or trying to get gameplay to work, I much rather prefer just looking at stuff. Yeah, love love 2D is pretty sick though. I like I like it. It's now that I know more about you know how game dev or just game programming is supposed to work. I think I I wouldn't feel too bad about going back to Love 2D, except for the fact that Love 2D also, you know, it uses Lua, Lua JIT, which is good because it's really fast. About as fast as C sharp, but <laughs> it does use, you know, base one indexing for, for, for lists. Does it have advanced low level stuff like physics? I think the thing about Love 2D is that you, Love 2D is just like a game wrapper, but it has like a bunch of libraries written for it, which should just work, which is nice. Like it's really nice like that. Uh, so like you can just drag and drop in libraries as you see fit. Like I know that there's like a, there's a library that I've used before called tiny ECS. Like I think, I think it's only like a hundred lines or something. And so you just load it in and then you just have an ECS in your project, right? Like who needs package management when you just need to like drag and drop files in, right? So it compiles to C++, it's JIT, so it's, don't really know how that works. <laughs> it is very fast. Right, like C sharp JIT, also very fast. Of course, ahead of time compiled AOT, Attack on Titan, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is the fastest, but you know, that's how it goes. Physics. So, physics three is equal to from reader file open. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're interested in it, like it's not hard to to download, I suppose. It is free and open source. There we go. Yeah, it looks easy enough. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it, because it is a game framework, right? You don't have a lot of the niceties that you're usually used to. So um, I think the there, there's a few really good libraries. Let me see if I can find them. So love 2D libraries. Yeah, category libraries. And I can probably point out like the the good ones. Because I've done this before. Let me see. So Flux, that's a good one. You probably want to use that. Yeah, pretty much like anything that RxI has written for Love2D is pretty good. 
Yeah, so Flux, anything that, any of RxI stuff. RxI doesn't do Love 2D anymore, I think, though. Yeah, they don't do any more Love 2D, which is a shame. Yeah, like Classic, that's pretty good. Uh, let me see, Lume, also pretty good. I've used that. I thought they had other stuff. Lurker, I've, I've heard good things about. Yeah, they have a lot of repositories. I never noticed that. Huh. Yeah, but most of these aren't really a uh, like actively updated either. Yeah, anything by RxI, usually pretty good. I've used Classic because uh, Lua doesn't have classes by default. Which is kind of tough. Everything in Lua is just a table. So you classic what that does, it's supposed to, you know, make things kind of object oriented, which is kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Let me see. I think Hump, I remember Hump being pretty good, but I also remember it wasn't, yeah. It hasn't been updated either. Oh, it's updated. Okay, so it used to be unupdated, but I guess they keep, someone's been keeping it updated. Yeah, hump is also pretty good. No classes, but structs? No, they're not even structs, they're just tables. <laughs> yeah. So because they're tables, you can do table logic on them which is kind of tough to, to wrap your head around. So like a struct, you're not able to like iterate over its fields, but like a table, you can. It's a bit weird. The, so the, there's like, it's like structs, but with like extra built-in functionality, I guess. And also because it's a table, you can have a meta table attached to it. And then a meta table attached to that meta table, I think, because a meta table is just another table. I think that's how love works, or not love. I think that's how Lua works, is that everything is just, you know, it's tables all the way down. All right, I think physics I'll need to look more into, and then user data. Is this a user data three? Oh, yeah, user data three. Need to grab this as well. Ooh. User data three. Oh, hold on. Did this in the wrong place. I like OOP, but I don't like this. Well, that's just how Lua works. So you know, if if they if they can make it work in Roblox, why can't you make it work in just love 2D, I suppose. You know, it makes things 10 times easier, isn't it? Yeah, that's the best part. Is uh, I, I think a lot of people don't really realize is that like the, the editor makes it easier to visualize what you're doing, you know? And especially if you're not super sure of what you want, you know, there's no reason to go, to just go straight to code, right? It's the same thing for like actual work as well. So I've seen this a lot it's like, oh, you should just use the, just use the command line. It's so much easier. But, it, you know, if you don't know what you want to do in Kubernetes, you should just use the web console. <laughs> and of course, the web console isn't like something that's bundled in with Kubernetes. But, uh, you know, the other other companies make a graphical UI for Kubernetes. <laughs> so that's that's honestly what I use to manage. Uh, Kubernetes clusters. I don't. I don't. I bear, I rarely use the, the command line unless I need to delete a bunch of stuff, which is easier to do via the command line. <clears throat> Can't even navigate. Thousand lines of codes to find things. Well, yeah, depends. I think like if you're doing like like level design and stuff, it's much much easier to have a, a graphical UI for sure. Or if you're trying to imagine like how an animation should play, you know, I think like game logic, I don't know, 
Like, it's it's okay, I guess. <laughs> it's okay to do it all via code, but to actually be able to visualize where things are in, ex you know, relation to each other, there's something to be said about that. User data three is equal to user data three from reader. So it's all the same stuff at the end of the day. File open res path join user data path. Unable to open file. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. You know how Godot does his editor? It's so brilliant. Yeah, it's pretty good. Godot's editor is pretty sick. Especially since the Godot editor is made, you know, it's it's dog fooding its own UI components, I think. I still need to figure out how Godot does like the draggable margins. <laughs> I don't I don't quite understand how that works, but you know, one day one day I'll actually take a look at it. Write editor by its code. Yeah. It's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. Hmm. Alright, so I have a bunch of... Hmm. I have a bunch of these things. So there's expressions... I think I should put res path first. Res path. All the important non-JSON things first. So then we'll need, let me see, what, what are the things that we're reading in? We're reading in. Love2D can do the same thing, write an editor with Love2D. I guess you could. It would just need someone to do it, right? <laughs> And then you would also need to come up with your own file formats and all that. Like, you could write your own engine on top of Love2D. You could write your own engine on top of anything, right? The only question is, like, is there someone who finds, you know, that useful or whatever? Like, I've been considering, like, what if I make an engine for, like, an engine on top of, like, Bevy? <laughs> I know they're already doing that, but it's, it seems to be pretty slow because they're focusing more on, like, performance stuff. But like Bevy, which is a, a game framework for Rust. It's pretty much the premier game framework as well. Which is neat. And they've just recently had a, a 060 release, which is cool. Let's see, physics. So this needs to be some sort of physics three, because these are all JSON information, I think. But they, uh, I don't know if they, these are all just JSON things. So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm still a little confused about. Is like, are these actually JSON or like this does have a physics representation as well, I guess? You mean we want an editor for Bevy or framework over it? Well, Bevy is a framework, right? So Bevy, Bevy engine, right? If you're familiar with that, they just came out with Bevy, oh, 06, I suppose, yesterday, question mark? Yeah. Like, I, I would like a, an, an editor for that. <laughs> but of course, when you, when you create an editor for any framework, you're also kind of implicitly creating an engine for it as well, right? Like Bevy is an engine, but it just doesn't have an editor. But once you create an editor for it, you know, when you're editing things, you need to uh, you need a way to be able to read those things back to you. And Bevy doesn't have its own built-in file format like Godot does, right? Unless I guess you, unless you're just storing everything as like a GLTF scene, which is crazy. I don't think that's a good idea. You could, but I don't think that's a good idea. Hmm. Serialize parse things. Yeah. So once you start serializing and parsing things, that's when you start creating like your own engine on top of a, the engine, I suppose. Which is neat. 
So I've considered, I've considered it. I've considered it. So I unfortunately am very visual, so it's it's hard for me to to do this stuff without seeing it. Alright, so we need expressions, which is just expressions. I guess this one doesn't need the that part. Pose, which is a pose three. Physics, physics three, should just be regular physics. Then user data is a user data three. Okay, cool. Which makes this a bit more understandable. Oh, and then these needs to be options. Because these might not exist for some reason. I don't know why they may not exist, but I don't know. All right, cool, 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 cool. And then I need some way to, oh, and then I also need motion as well. <sighs> okay. Last one, motion, motion RS. So then let's mutable motion three equal none, let sum, motion path is equal to JSON3 something like that I uh, guess it doesn't exist what is it called? motions oh and then oh, these are already serialized what? okay huh? Why are these already serialized here? That's so weird. That is that is very strange. Yeah. Okay, sure. Motions. Congratulations, welcome to the team. Interesting. So these are serialized by default. That doesn't make any sense, hold on. Why are these serialized by, by default? So this should be in the model three. Oh, well, that explains it. Oh, and then there's a f associated file with it. Huh? Why? This might be better for the run time to consume. Oh yeah, for sure. If it's already serialized, I, I guess it's just easier for computers to read bytes or rather than reading strings. Also, this seems really tough. Oh no, because each motion... Each motion has potentially one to many files. No. Oh no, yeah, okay. I see. Oh, that's good. Okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, okay, so let motions equal JSON3 file. Or I, is it just motions? Yeah. Mm. No, yeah, no, it's on the file references. File references motions. Right, so we just go have a reference to that, that's okay. And then for each one of those, we're gonna have one to many motions, okay. So, what we are doing, actually we don't, we don't even need to do this. So each motions, actually no we do because we need to run through every single part in the struct oh no okay hold on let's think about this i was gonna say we could just do like json file or json file references motions and then we could just iterate over it so like iter which would give us a handle on each motion. So this is very Java style. So this is like the individual motion and then 
we'll just collect it into it. Because these are all motion threes. But actually, we can't do that because, we, yeah, actually, yeah, never mind. We can't iterate over motions because motions is just a struct of different fields. Uh, yeah, it's not, you can, of course I can do it. It's just that I, it's so much work. I didn't realize this would be so much work. I thought all I needed to do was load in like these parts and then the rest would be easy. Uh, I didn't I didn't realize I needed to, just, to load in every other file. You know, in retrospect that makes more sense though, but that's tough. Um It's the easy part, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's the easy part. It's also like the, the most time consuming part as well. All right, so I, I think I need, hold on. So there's two motions. So I need motion model three and then also just Regular motion as well. Motion, motion three. Runtime is much harder. Yeah, I suppose I, I should be thankful it hasn't gotten harder, I guess. Uh, let's see. Could have just like another struct that contains the motion data, and then I can look for those as well. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna do. This is just gonna be in like an inner struct that just kind of like exists. Structs, motion data. So then there's like idle, which is a vector of motion three. What is the weave expression of training someone that you can do it? Gambate. Gambate. Gam, gam, gambate. One of those. You can do it. Or ganbaro. He's done it. <laughs> I know. It's it's the the root the root verb is gan. Is it's probably like gan suru, right? Gan, ganbo suru, and then you can conjugate it as ganbatte, as in like, you can do it, you can currently do it. Ganbaro is like I don't, I don't even know what ganbaro is. I don't know. Would it be like ganbi shimas? <laughs> to be polite about it. <laughs> uh, I've always found that kind of like that aspect of Japanese language to be pretty funny. It's like you can like say something like in a polite way, which is like it's more of like a polite, like talking about other people way, or you can talk about things as like polite towards like I don't know someone like in authority way. Like there's there's multiple types of polite speech. Whereas, I don't know, like, I know Chinese really only has, there's like three types of polite speech, which is just like, norm, there's like slang, normal, and then polite. Whereas, yeah, and which is really similar to English, which is like slang, normal, and then polite. What is polite English? Polite English is not using like filler words, like you, if you're trying to be really polite, you would should not say like, um, uh. You would also say, you would not, you would not say like he, she, he or she, or it, I suppose. She, she, they, you would say like their actual name or title, I, I guess, which is almost the same way in Chinese as well. Something is that, argument that is like VTubers, animes, things like abuse, Animal or child cuteness, a bit human behavior. I guess I, I, don't, I don't know. I have no compunctured for or against those. You know, 
Like you're you're talking to someone who thinks that Cookie Clicker is a good game, so you're not gonna get a <laughs> you're not gonna get a good take from me. <laughs> like I th I think Cookie Clicker is a you know it's it's like a it's like a game distilled down to its most basic form, which I'm you know I'm okay with. That's all right. Okay, I see what I need to do. So we'll we'll derive default. We'll create a default motion data. Let motions equal motion data default. Something like that. And then we'll just have to run through every single motion uh, thing in the struct. So motion files. So let's see. Motions dot, hold on. Let mutable motions, motions dot idle is equal to, and we'll just replace it, right? Is equal to motion files, ooh, idle. It's her map. Okay, <laughs> we're getting somewhere. He's doing it. All right, so we don't need to debug it. But this is pretty much what I need, I think. Except this needs to be from a reader. Okay, hold on. Mm. So this is. Motion three from reader, which is file open res path join x. You get a reference to the x. Then we'll need to expect unable to open idle motion file, something like that. Then collect, I suppose. <laughs> That's pretty weird. That's pretty weird, but it'll work. Gambare. Gambare, gambate. Gambaro. Or as you would say in Chinese, jia yo. Or, you know, <laughs> which is almost this. It's not. It, it, jia yo in Chinese means the same thing, roughly. But whenever I hear that, I always think of the. What what's the what's the movie? Uh, it's an Adam Sandler movie where it has the the one guy that says you can do it, but I'm not I'm not sure it's supposed to be Chinese or not. He just says it with like a weird accent. <laughs> so yeah, that's my jam. Oh, can I not join this? Join for enum results. Oh, I didn't do this properly. Okay. That's okay. So then your problem... Trait bound... Oh, these are all motion files. Okay, so x.file. Yeah, and then they also have a fade in, fade out time. But that's okay. Because that's also... Oh no. <laughs> Oh no. There's more things that I thought. Okay. Should I expect to read idle motion files? There's a lot of movies that can be. Well, that one is, um, hold on, we can find it. Adam Sandler. You can't, is that, oh, it's, um, hold on, it's, um, I'm not looking at the screen, it's Waterboy. Is it Waterboy? No. What movie is it? It's the Waterboy, he's done it! It's the Waterboy. 
I've seen the water boy before. I've seen that. <laughs> Where Adam Sandler plays like a, a mentally impaired individual. <laughs> Hold on. So why doesn't this work? Value of type motion three cannot be built from a. Oh, I think I need to. Oh, I need to expect something like this. So expect unable to read idle motion file. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably all right. Yeah. And so now I just need to basically repeat this for every single one of these. Oh, but then I need to also maintain the... That's tough. Like, I'll still have the file references as well, but I, I won't have the... That's tough, man. That's tough because each motion has a fade in and fade out time. Why are you like this? <laughs> Why? Why would you do such a thing? It's almost as if I would need to redefine motion like once again. I, like I need like a wrapper on top of this in order for this to work. That's tough. Anyways, I'm way over time. Uh, mostly because I have stuff to do for tomorrow. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll be live on Tuesday from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. Probably streaming more development on this. Uh, mostly just a lot of rust stuff. Hopefully. I'll be. I'll have time to work on this on Monday, <laughs> so I can really just crunch some stuff out. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. You too. You too. And like you too, not in like a sarcastic way. I think like linking this part has actually that's actually a pretty good uh pretty good get. Yeah. I think this would have been a lot harder if I didn't know where this was. You know what? We're even going to save a link to it. We'll put it here. Look at that. Congratulations. <laughs> Anyways, all this code is free and open source. You can find all of this on my GitHub. Uh, let's see. Update for Rust API changes. And then Let's also push this stuff. It's really just the, what happened, what changed with the lib rs? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I changed the name of it from cubism loader and cubism loader factory to cubism model, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then there's more stuff that changed inside of the loader as well. So load in more fields. Yeah, I think this is probably good enough to keep me going for a while. So let me just drop links to both of those if you're interested in, you know, looking through the code. I don't expect you are, but <laughs> just in case there's any VOD people wanting to peek at it. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If you haven't given the channel a follow already, I highly encourage you to do so. I stream Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern time, and on Wednesdays from 9 to 11 p.m. Uh, I've been pretty busy recently, though, but so it's harder to find the time to stream. But, you know, shouldn't be too bad. Anyways, I mean, this is where we're at, is where we're able to load stuff in. Uh, now I just need to load in the rest of the information, because I guess the sample... The sample projects that I've been looking at don't actually do that, so. 
<laughs> there you go. But yeah. I will see you on Tuesday. Goodbye. Oh, and you can find like applications like this also on my GitHub as well. <laughs> Free and open source. All right, goodbye. Get out of here.